of Thursday, February 13th, 2020, uh, to order. Um, can we do a Pledge of Allegiance, please? <coughs> a Pledge of Allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In the case of a fire, there are two ways to exit the chamber. To my left, exit through the council chamber doors, turn left and walk down one flight of stairs and out of the building, or exit the door to the rear of the council chambers. In either case, once out of the building, walk a safe distance away from the building. Roll call, please. <coughs> Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Absent. Charles Ladd. Here. Mary Scott. Absent. Virginia Higley. Here. Fran Francis Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Absent. Dane Thorogood. Absent. Vinny Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, I'd like to see uh, Vinny Grillo um, as a uh, full member for tonight's meeting to take the place of Linda DeGray, who is absent. Okay. Can I get an approval of the minutes of January 16th, 2020, the special meeting? I move we approve the minutes of, of the special meeting. Second. Questions or concerns? No. All in favor? Abstention. <coughs> No, Frank abstained. And on approval of the minutes, January 23rd, regular meeting. I move we approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 23rd. Second. Questions or concerns? <coughs> All in favor? Unanimous. And the <coughs> zoning enforcement officers report. This is for the new members. <coughs> Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, the last meeting, I believe that you received a spreadsheet listing a number of violations and a, a report on some of the more important violations that uh, we're presently working on. I'll give you some updates. Uh, situation with 350 North Maple Street that's been going on for some time. That's actually being handled by the town attorney's office. There's uh, uh, an injunction in place and uh, the gentleman's <coughs> attempting to comply still with the uh, court order regarding that matter. That was uh, dealing with a junkyard. Uh, 9 St. Thomas Street, that actually went to a, a citation, a citation hearing. Uh, the fines amounted to $1,200 and that was in regards to uh, two buildings, accessory buildings and a fence that were uh, put on town property, strip of town property, and onto the neighbor's property to the rear. The uh, fence has been removed, the two buildings have been removed, and the slabs that the buildings that were on were, have been removed also. Uh, presently, the uh, building department's actually looking into uh, permits for another building that was put up without permits. Uh, You'll see that a number of uh, car dealers in town, including uh, Leah Hyundai, Leah VW, uh, Infield Street Auto Sales, Artioli Dodge, Russo Auto Exchange, they were all issued uh, notices of violations regarding site plan violations where they're parking vehicles on landscaped areas uh, on their property, as opposed to what was approved. Uh, most have complied. Uh, the only one that's still in violation is uh, auto exchange, and that deals with uh, signage issue. Uh, 117 North Street, myself, Laurie, and uh, the town attorney's office went to uh, New Britain Court. Uh, I believe it was the 13th of January, and uh, there was a court hearing, and the judge allotted 45 days to, uh, for the applicant or the property owner to uh, apply to come into compliance. Um, as such, uh, no 
per, no applications have been submitted regarding the violation out there. That's the, it's farm property, it was purchased, uh, there's a residential home on it, but there's also a sand and gravel company that's been operating on it. That's the basis of the violation. Um, and then uh, there's a situation involving 79 Infield Street, and that's a recycling business that went into the rear of that building. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, that's used to be electrical wholesalers. And uh, recycling, of course, is not allowed in a business zone. It's, it's only allowed in industrial zones. The property abuts residential properties up there, R33. Uh, it's gone through the different uh, steps of the violation process. Citation was issued. Uh, the party also appealed to the ZBA but never showed for the meeting. Uh, as such, I issued the citation the next day, and uh, he's appealing the fines, but uh, the property, uh, in researching the property further, it's found that uh, the bank is foreclosed on the property, so we're not really sure at one point we're gonna be able to correct the issue. I was told today by the attorney that represented the bank that uh, Friday the 21st, the bank will actually take possession of it, and uh, they'll give me a contact number so we can see if we can rectify the violation. So that's about it. So if you have any other questions or... Anybody? Sounds like an interesting week. Okay. <laughs> uh, the issue of the uh, signage, I guess, that came up at the last meeting was taken care of too. So... I know they're popping up uh, quite frequently now, so we're trying to get a rain on them. Yeah, yeah. And then one question: There was some debates going back and forth about the people who stand on the side of the road holding the signs, like the Liberty Tax guy. Yep. He is within the regulate. He can't be stopped, can he? No. No, he can't. No, that's that's an issue that we went through before. Uh, the only thing, I mean, obviously you can't go into the roadway, you'd be impeding traffic, police would take uh, action on that. Uh, there's a problem with uh, enforcing that type of signage and, and advertising. Though. He doesn't have a sign. I went by there the other day, he's not holding a sign. He, you can get him because the sign, when he used to do it, is moving. We do not allow moving signage. Um, you can go to the owner of the bank who owns the property, the manager of the bank, the bank owns the property, and discuss it with him. And um, I'm sure you can be persuasive about if he, if he holds up a sign again. He waves, that's allowed. Holding a sign is not allowed. Right, but he's not holding a sign. Right, that's what I'm saying. Somebody said holding a sign. N no. 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 Oh, he can wave. He can also stand there holding a sign, but the minute he starts spinning it around and stuff like and that. And walking with it. That's why you see the store closings. They're just standing still holding these signs because you can't stop them. Right. You know, like coming down Route 5 tonight, I mean, and a lot of the houses in the historic district, they have like prom sales going on and stuff yeah. like that. Now, those are on private property, That's but they're in the state right away. Mm -hmm. You know, that's allowed. Mm -hmm. Yep. See, so there's ways to yeah, manipulate yeah. it that there's yeah. nothing you can do. So. But at one time when they first started, when Liberty first started, he was flipping and waving and there were accidents. Right, and, and I think maybe allowed. that's what somebody was interpreting mm -hmm. when zoning said something about it. But for him to actually stand there in costume he with no sign. He can stand and wave, and that's what he does. Right. And dance. And dance, yeah. yep. All right, everybody good? Rick, thank you for coming in tonight. No problem. I mean, we're all set if you wanted to scoot out. Oh, I can hang around for a little bit. I mean, you've been pretty busy lately, and we understand. So I just wanted to get the new members up to speed on what you were working on. So I appreciate it. Okay. Um, next, uh, public participation. Does anyone... Would anyone like at this point in the meeting to come up and speak comments and concerns um, relating to planning and zoning in Enfield um, that is not on the agenda? Um, you're welcome to come up and speak now. Anyone? 
No one? Okay. Thank you. Bond releases, PH2850. Jenny? I just had a question. Site remediation thing is fine, but how can you release a landscape bond in the wintertime when you don't know what's growing? That's why. It's been two it's years, been two since, years since, since. since it was put in. And somebody's been out there last summer and looked at it? Yep. So. Thank you. I had the same concerns, but I looked at the staff's comments, and I, I believe Vinny brought it up, too. Yep. Anybody else questions, concerns about questions, concerns about the bond release? Yeah, I was just interested in the timing and how it all works. So I could be brought up to speed. I see this bond was given to the town. I'm oh, sorry. I'm just interested in the process um, so that I could be brought up to speed. I see the bond was issued uh, in 2017, and uh, we're releasing it today. It's on the table to be released. So, um, when was the property inspected for the release of procedure? I guess I'm just trying to find out why it's taken. So when was it completed? So they had to file plans. They had to file as built. So when was the as built um, received? Uh, this past summer. The the issue comes into play is we don't on our own release a bond. We have to wait. <clears throat> excuse me until there's a request by the uh, applicant. So the applicant will put in a letter. Uh, requesting a release of the bond, there's a form that's required to be filled out. At that point, we start the process of releasing the bonds, and we come to you with the uh, report and the uh, resolution. So it's triggered by the applicant. So like 517, they they uh, requested or filed the the filed the uh, requested information. Correct. So this is it's almost a year before they get their money done. By the time they file. After they file. No, after, after they, they file, file, it's almost a year. We're in, almost, we're in February. Ten months. Ten months. So I guess I want to know, is that the procedure? We After the filing, that the money still is not released or the bond's not released for ten months? No, we usually go, go about it. I wasn't in, I wasn't here when that came in originally. So um, they contacted me regarding that a couple weeks or a month ago. And I started the process of doing the uh, bond release forms. Okay. So these could be expedited quicker if the people... Normally they are. It's just that okay. that one happened right. to come in in an email form. And then we were waiting on an actual letter because we require a letter from the property owner uh, or the project manager, whoever submits the bond for the project. Um, and we were waiting on that for a couple months before we actually got that. Okay. So... Yep. Okay. Just want to be sure that, uh, you know, we're moving along quickly and we're not sitting on the bonds too long. And the, Normally, that's our, not the case. Our customers are being served quickly. No, normally, that's not the case. Okay. No, good. Thank you. So I, so I take it once we got the email, we went and did the inspection. The inspection was done when we got the original uh, as-built. It's always done with the as-built because they're usually looking for the, uh, the CL. Okay. All right. So after that... If it deals with a landscape bond, obviously we have to wait through the uh, spring and summer to release that one. Yep. But like I said, in the springtime, I wasn't around for a period of time. Yep. And then, uh, so I missed that, but then they contacted me and we started the ball rolling on the release. Good. Any other questions, concerns? Can I get a motion to? M Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution to release the bonds for public hearing 2850 in the amount of $17,750 for the site restoration bond and $7,050 for the landscape bond. Second. Questions? Good. All in favor? Unanimous. We have no new or no continued pub public hearings, so we will move to new public hearings. Uh, public hearing 2964, zone text amendment application. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, February 13th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in a town hall council chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2964, 
zone text amendment application to table 4.20 use table for residential districts to allow for multifamily residential use within the historic district HR 33 zone requiring adherence to section 4.30.2 conversion of buildings for residential purposes town of owner our town investment LLC applicant historic residential R33 zone HR 33 zone and the information is available at the town clerk's office Ken Nelson here um, Charles Ladd here Virginia Higley here Francis Alimo here Vinnie Grillo here and Richard Suzak is here Lori is the Jen. applicant here good evening name and address for the reference Chris Marslick our town investments LLC 15 South Road Enfield Connecticut thank you go ahead um, I'm looking to convert uh, 1283 Enfield Street from a two-family, which it currently is, to a three-family by uh, um, subdividing the first floor. Um, I currently have a two-family to the right of me. We currently are a two-family, and there's a couple other in the area, so we're looking to get the text amendment so we could do that and go through zoning. I know there were some requirements or um, some conditions they asked for, and we were able to meet all that as far as uh, I think the septic was a question, and we're not on septic. We are connected to the public sewer system. Um, and I don't know if that needs to be validated or not, but we can do that if that's one of the requirements. Commissioner Hayden. If, um, are you in the HR 33 district? Yes, we are. Is our multiple families allowed? He said there's two families right next door to Right, him. that's what I'm saying. So why would we change the zoning regs? Lori? If there are two family homes on either side or wherever close by why would we change the zoning regulations why can't he just have a special use permit and be done with it i don't know the answer to that i don't know why we changed a lot of things but uh, but we could approve it without changing the zoning regs correct no mm, i don't think why so not? not if it says that you can't do this it. is an hr 33 zone duplexes are not allowed in hr 33 well, they're allowed with special permit in other zones but not in hr 33. Right. Um, uh, but the thing is that affects the whole district i have no problem with uh, two family but multifamily there's no definition of multifamily which is what you're changing it to in our regulations i looked so uh, that would need to be interpreted and I went to the Connecticut State statute and I couldn't find it. I went to the um, Webster Collegian 10th edition, 9th edition, by the way, they're up to the 12th edition, but the 9th edition and it was just a generic noun, you know, like this is when more than one person lives in there. So I, I think, and I, I, I'm digressing, but my point is if we change it tonight, it changes for the whole district without any guide specific guidelines and that's my concern I think that was the point of adding footnote 14 to reference the conversion of buildings for residential purposes oh. I think that was the point of adding um, section or footnote 14 referencing adherence to uh, 4.30.2 conversion of buildings. I did read that and it just didn't give me the um, comfort that I personally required. We have a lot of historic buildings down there and the way I interpret it, and not you, but the way I interpret it for future people coming in, they could just tear down the building and build a, oh no that's that's it's multifamily it's not there's there's no guidelines in there on how to protect what we have again i have no problem with the two family i i think to that i may answer part of that being in historic zone we're not allowed to change the exterior of the buildings in any way shape or form so no one could tear it down or alter the exterior but they could alter the interior is what we're looking to do but i don't know if that was what but, yeah but i have learned that nothing is forever everything changes somebody could go to the state which is which oversees the historic district and say well you know 
Um, I think it's a great idea, but I think that we need to be looking at maybe the 1940s or the 1950s, and then you could just tear it down and put up a glass, you know. Again, I'm overreacting, but I'm just giving staff my concerns. Again, nothing to do with, I have no problem with you converting. Uh, it used to be that um, people in most districts could convert to a th from a one to a, to a three, and I don't know why they don't I do it in the historic district. That's, but that's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Because one thing it does say in footnote 14, I believe, is, is that you can only add one additional unit per building that's there right now. So right. You, you couldn't take a, a one family and convert it to a three family. You can only take a one Perfect. family and convert it into two families. Right. So in that sense, you're sort of limiting yeah. how the conversions right. could be made in how many multifamily or how many multi But it doesn't say that you can't tear the structure down to build a new one. I mean, you could leave the front up and do the whole side and back. I'm just, again, I'm not comfortable, and um, I understand the intent. It just isn't spelled out for me personally. Well, I know the historic district in Enfield is pretty tough. And, you know, they, they stick to their guns as far as the front of the house goes. Any additions it's, they make you build? It's actually retro. the sides. It's, it's actually all the way to the back. I've done, a, I've actually converted feet. a right. historic house once so, already. And it is very tough. Mm. Right. So anything he alters on this house to make the unit, he has to conform with the historic district. Even if it burnt to the ground and he rebuilt it, he still has to build it period correct. That's the reason I have, a, I, I have a basically a six hundred thousand dollar insurance policy on it because it has to be built absolutely to the historic. Are there any structures in the historic district that are more than two hundred fifty feet back? Because that's the guideline. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few Sorry. houses in the historic district that don't meet the guidelines. Mm -hmm. Right. Before the historic district was right. formed. Right. But I'm there saying. There are some. Pardon me. There are some that are located beyond, but it's it's spelled out in the historic ordinance as know, to what I've those properties it. are. <laughs> I've read it. Are. So, okay. So, uh, uh, just if you don't mind, you know, typically um, multifamily is considered, uh, it really depends on definitions, but multifamily is usually like four or above dwelling units. We don't allow either the duplexes or the multifamily in HR 33. So but I think that you that's will. why the... That, that, that's what I'm just saying. So, yeah. you know, so. we don't allow two, three, or four, and then we don't, don't allow multifamily above that either. I, so. I, I'm confused. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. I know what the zoning regulations say. I, I just know that there are so many two families in the historic district mm -hmm. and right. apartments in the historic district, and I'm just wondering if we don't allow them, how they came up out. And they were not there before, you know, because I looked some of them up. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Because well, the have regulation no problem was with changed. I, I think she's saying that she doesn't think that they were there before the regulation was changed to the historic. Correct. That right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so I, I, I mean, I, I can't speak to that. Yeah. But I mean, I can speak okay. to mine and say mine's the two family I live in's been there since. Right. Probably in the 50s, if not. Not the right. 30s or and, 40s. and you're doing it the correct way, and I, I give you credit for that because a lot of people just build it and then say, oh, you know, it's been there forever. I mean, too much business in this town no, no, no. <laughs> Again, I have no issues with yes, what you. you're trying I to do. It. I understand. So, so I think Commissioner Higley's biggest um, problem with this is changing the entire district. Right. Is there a way to do um, site specific? through like a special permit, which I saw you shaking your head no, where we could do something, you know. I, I know the town does a lot of things, you know, to make things work and to make her feel comfortable, because I understand her concerns, mm -hmm. um, you know. The most I can think of is a use variance, which are difficult because you have to prove hardship and uses, I mean, there, it's sort of difficult to prove use hardships um, before Zoning Board of Appeals, but I'm not the Zoning Board of Appeals, so we can't really say what they would or wouldn't do. 
Do we have a minimum square footage that's allowed? In other words, I'm, I know you have a, a large is. house, but do we have like a minimum, 600 it's feet? It's 600 that's per, what I thought. per unit. So is that going to change or is that going to stay the same? It stays the same. For multifamily. <clears throat> so if you don't have 600, can you go and get a variance? Well, that'd be up to ZBA. Well, it should, no, you can actually spell out in, in the regulations that it cannot be varied by the Zoning Board It is in the building code. I know that, the 600 yeah. square feet. Well, I know it's in here. I'm just saying that I wondered if it would change with multifamily. Well, looking I mean, at If you wanted to do four, would you have enough space? Um, yeah, in theory, I probably could. In yeah, theory, so, I could. But he can't because it's because only, can only go one, one more unit. unit. But that can come back and be changed. No. But he's not here. No, no, that. no. I, again, I have no problem with you. Um, and thank you for explaining. Right, right. That's, I mean, the one unit is what I'm hanging my hat on. I understand your concerns. It says multi-family. Multi-family so. Right, but it's got to be a three right. that made to a four. It can't be a two right. made to but, a four. But this is what we're working with the new regulations mm -hmm. to keep from happening. In other words, it says multifamily in one spot, and it says one more in another spot. But they're all multifamilies. His two families are multifamily now. Right, duplex. Right, so whether it's two, three, or four, it's a multifamily. Right, but I'd rather see duplex. But a duplex. Well, Rich said you could only do one more. Right, right, right. So right. It's a duplex. Yeah. If it's three units or four units, not a duplex anymore. Do we have any that are three? I don't know. You, you, you know, the only thing that, uh, the only way I think that we can address your concerns, Ms. Higley, is the fact that, you know, if there was a caveat that, you know, and, and again, I could see where, you know, today we change it from a one to a two family house, and then in five years we change it from a two family to a three family house. So that, you know, if we added, you know, a, 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 you know in footnote number 14 or subsection, you know, 4.30.2, we can add something that says that, you know, once a conversion was made under, you know, these regulations, it cannot be utilized again as part of another conversion, you know, utilizing these same regulations. So, so, so that would sort of definitively say, you can't take a two fam one family, change it to two, come back right. five years later and change it to a three, come back five years later and change it to a four. So that, you know, once it's done once, you can only have one chance to do that. I and, agree. And possibly if we did something along those lines so to add it to right. footnote number 14, you know, it would, you know, prevent you that, that reoccurrence from, of... Over and over every few yeah, years. Mm -hmm. adding I'm additional units that. all the time. So, and, and that would satisfy you. That would satisfy me because for the most part, everybody are responsible mm -hmm. homeowners and they all buy in the historic so they can yeah, keep yeah, it that's historic. Right. I agree with but every you, once in a while you I get one. There's one, one all the time. So I think the yeah, one time would cover yeah. everybody. And I would be fine with that. Mr. Chairman, point of order, please. There's too many discussions going on. Thank you. You're welcome. Per meeting this. Good. Through the chair to the staff. Yeah. So, um, staff, we're, this proposal is to change the zoning from Route 190 to King Street. Correct. That uh, far yes. distance. Yep. Right. So. Um, <coughs> well, it's not changing the zone. It's changing a permitted use. Per, a permitted yeah. use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that. in the background, we have no uh, no issues from the house from the historical commission. They're fine with this. Yep. So it's I think in the notes. right. Mm -hmm. So and I think what the chairman Nelson was saying, the historical commission is on top of things and they are very strict. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't see a problem with this if the historical commission is on board and it's a total totally clean application and all the staff comments were positive. Mr. Chair, I don't have a problem with this. Okay. Any other questions from the commission before I open it up to the public? Commissioner Grillo. As far as the parking, did you take, was that all considered in this? Yeah, is there's off street parking, there's going to be plenty year. of yep. parking we'll there? Six, we'll have six. We'll actually have the ability to have seven plus, and if I wanted to, if I could increase the, the driveway, I could actually probably go to about 12 spaces if I really wanted to, but I do have seven the way it sits right now. 
Thank you. And that's including the garage, but that's seven. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Chair, if I might. Sure. Um, I was thinking maybe what we could do is in the table under duplex residences, um, we could put in under HR 33 special permit with the caveat that it can only go up to four units. So then that way it meets three point, I am 4.30.2 as opposed to like a full multifamily development. Because I know this commission has uh, uh, not been in, uh, in favor of a lot of multi, large multifamily complexes. So that way you're just, you're still limiting it to um, two to four do, uh, units per property and it's still following the 4.30.2 but it, it doesn't push it over to that big multi-family residential type of development. No? I like the way Rich said it, but that's just me. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. you I'm can sorry. keep coming back, and then you cut up yeah. the whole house. <coughs> and, and I just like the way he said it. They're not residential. They're not residential. Rich? No. They are residential, but this says anything. You're fine with what Lori just oh, yeah. said? Or no. the way I, I apologize. Said that would be, I, I said duplex, and it should be conversion of uh, buildings for residential use. That's where the, the use would go into, not the duplex. In, in the table, that's all. Okay. I, I guess I do have one, one comment. In terms of, you know, under section 4.30.2, you know, the subsection number G, it, it has conversion of non-residential non buildings such as industrial or mill buildings to multifamily may take place under this section and requirements of sections B and C above shall be waived for such conversions because that, that allows for significant Yep. number of units in terms of, you know, maybe, yep. and again, maybe we say, you know, section, you know, 4.30.2, add a section H and say, except in, you know, or in say, especially in, in the HR 33 district, you know, you cannot u utilize this particular, you know, I, I guess caveat more than once on any particular lot with these regulations and, you know, sex, sex, subsection G does not apply in an H33 zone. So this way you get rid of the multifamilies and you only allow it to be used once by adding a, a subsection H that sort of says that kind of language. And that would allow, so, so say, say Chris purchased the nursing home and wanted to convert that larger property into an apartment complex, he could do that. Is that on the HR 33? Because that would be a commercial building. Right, but if it was in the HR 33, we just excluded it from being being able so to do he that. couldn't do that. Correct. Okay. Because again, by adding that subsection H, <coughs> that says you can you can not use this in more than once, and you could not use sub subsection G as part of this regulation in okay. HR 33. Right. So we could we could say that. Um, Subsection G does not apply Correct. to uh, within this caveat. Correct. Anybody else before I open it up to the public? Any questions, Chris, before? Okay, you. if you can have a seat back there, we're gonna let the public come up and speak. Thank you. You're welcome. Would anybody in the public like to come up and speak in regards to public hearing 2964? For the first time, anybody <laughs> like to come up? For the second time? The third time? Okay. I'm good. Ready to close the public hearing. If you guys are good, can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I move to close the public hearing. No, we agreed to vote on it. All in favor? It's unanimous. Public hearing's closed. Okay. It's up to you guys. You want to move forward with M it? Mr. Chair, I'll move for the approval of public, the, the resolution to approve public hearing number 2964, dated um, February 13, 2020, as prepared by the, the, the planning department. 
I guess there are no conditions listed, but we are going to be modifying the footnote number 14 to include an, another, another subsection number H, which would indicate that the use of, you know, the added unit per building can only be utilized once per building under these regulations, and that subsection G does not apply in so an HR 33 zone. For clarification, that would be a change to 4.30.2, not necessarily footnote 14, but footnote right. 14, right. 14 would Correct. still be referenced. Correct. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Next, public hearing 2965, 51 Palumba Drive. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, February 13th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 2965, 51 Palumbo Drive, special use and site plan application to allow for a freestanding tenant identification pylon sign under section 10.30.9, DEFCON Commons LLC owner, Darren Sian applicant, MAP 56, lot seven, business local BL zone. Ken Nelson. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Francis Alimo. Here. Vinny Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Welcome. Welcome. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Darren Senna from Hartford Sign and Design. I'm here with the landlord representative. J.R. Cody from um, uh, DEFCON Commons LLC. How you doing? Good. How are you? Thank you. Good. Give us a little update of what you're here for. We have a conforming multi-tenant pylon sign um, that meets your requirements as far as setback, um, height requirement, um, trying to accommodate for all the tenants in the plaza. Actually, surprised this wasn't done originally. Um, and that's what we're looking here to, to do. try to give the tenants within the center more exposure and absolutely uh, a system in this new world we're living in, uh, Amazon. of Amazon world, and trying to help our tenants out. Yeah. Absolutely, good. Lori, you have anything you want to add? Pretty straightforward. Um, it is pretty straightforward. We, <laughs> we, um, we. Uh, presented a staff report um, in your packets uh, that had comments from the engineering department and uh, the police department. Um, they did go out and stake out where the sign along Paloma Drive would be located and provided measurements, which um, was a pretty fast turnaround, so thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for your help. Um, and we did circulate um, at your desk the updated comments when we did send those out to engineering and police both got back to us today and said they have no concerns with the pr proposed change with concern to site uh, visibility of sight lines and stuff like that. So the only other item that I have in the staff report that we noted was um, we weren't sure uh, in writing the staff report, how much landscaping would be taken out um, and what was approved. Um, it's my understanding in conversation on the phone that uh, landscaping will be put back in if it is taken out. Um, so we did add a site-specific condition of, of approval regarding landscaping and bonding, if you guys wanted to do that or not. Um, so that's the only other open item that I had. Made that a condition. I put that in there just um, in case you guys wanted to. If you don't want to, you, uh, you guys you can take it off the, the okay. list. Yeah, our, our plan is to put the footing into where the bush area is, mm -hmm. and then we will replace it with low-lying seasonal flowers. Okay. Keep it simple and keep it low and low not obstruct low maintenance, and also have it low so that there's no obstruction to sight lines or anything like that. Okay. Commissioner Higley. I don't think we need a bond as long as it's some kind of <laughs> shrubs or plants and no cars. We're good. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Grillo. I agree. I, I don't think the bond is necessary, but definitely the, the shrubbery has to go back in there, I would think. Commissioner Suzak. Because I have one question. In terms of your retrofitting one sign, Correct. Are you actually, and, and I, I believe you're, you're adding sleeves on top, 
are you going to dismantle the existing sign, leave the posts that are there, Underneath. and then slide something over it, and then somehow secure it to yeah. what's ever there? And the, and the other pylons. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, we're just adding the tenants. Uh, a few tenant slot names, not not six. Uh, six. Right. Yeah. I, I I guess you're you're going to be you know another three feet higher. You know these these. these no, we're going underneath the existing pylon site. You I know because I I guess I, and and maybe that's my confusion in terms of right now I I see that, you know the existing sign is 170 feet, which is 170 inches. Right which is less than 15 feet, because 15 feet is 180. Right. And you, it says your new sign is 18 feet. So, so based, we're so raising up the existing sign, keeping the post in place, not doing anything to the post, raising it up, and putting the new sign underneath. So, so the additional pet so panels. Are you, how are you adding, so you're gonna add something to the base, you know, some extending the, the sign feet? Lower, but but it, they, they're only a certain height right now. They're they're less right. than 15 feet high now, yep. and I'm not sure how you're going to get them up we're to 18 feet. <laughs> we're only no, we're only adding four feet of signage, so we're raising that up about two feet, and then putting the other sign underneath. Right now, it's pretty high. There's a lot of space underneath the existing sign. If you look at the original signpost. Yeah, but well, again, if you look at that picture, okay, yep. look at the upper left-hand corner. It, it says the sign is 170 inches. So 170 inches is less than 15 feet because 15 feet is 180. Yeah, right. But then when I look at you know the the left hand side side of the bigger sign, it says it's 18 feet tall. So 18 feet is more than 15 feet. So somehow you got to grow the feet by three feet or more, and you can't just stretch it because whatever it's made out of doesn't stretch. We're taking this sign, we're raising it up, yep. and putting the other sign underneath it. Correct, but you have to you have to add three feet of uh, a feet feet of, of and I'm not I'm here. not sure how you're going to get that had so that extra yeah, three feet. I'm sorry, yes, yes, yeah. we are extending you're the correct. post. This, the post these are third post covers, so that what you're seeing is the post covers. Inside there, there's steel, so we're telescoping the steel up, and then putting the new signs underneath it. A new sheet. Okay, so so basically correct. you're going to do some magic okay. and yes. hocus pocus, yes. and you're going to make it work. All right, I just wanted to make sure I understood yes. what you were going to do. Yes. But. Yes. Commissioner mm. <laughs> Alimo. Yeah. Did I understand that you weren't changing the current footing? You're not going into no. the ground at all? No. And that footing is going to be able to withhold Absolutely. the additional sign? Absolutely. Yes, and in your design going forward, um, let's say you had a, a space that you were going to divide into two spaces yep. and you needed an extra sign. Are you developing this in a way where you won't have to come back here yes. and you could add another <laughs> yep. tenant space, tenant sign yep. to Both it? systems are set up that way. So okay. the signs don't have to be attached. Anything has to be attached. So to you it. can Absolutely. add to it? and Those dividers are interchangeable. It's, it's an extruded system. Okay. So there's parts that can be moved and divided. But it is possible account. in that type of a use where you'll have a single use now that can be divided into two and you need some more signage. Yep. And you Absolutely. don't need to come back here. Like glass, Absolutely. It's like a glass panel that would slide into the... Great. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank yep. you. Yep. Any other commissioners, comments, concerns? Anything else you'd like to add before I open it up to the public? No, I want to thank you for your consideration. To no problem. <laughs> Just Commissioner Grillo. The only thing I... I have two copies of the sign and the only thing that's confusing me a little bit is uh, the one that you lifted up and showed me said 18 feet but I'm looking at this one that says 22 feet You're doing that, two that's signs. the, the other one. the new sign that's, that's the, the new one. that's the new sign there's one so I thought the original was only no, 16 two feet that was all oh, there's there's one on Hazard Avenue and there's one on Palumba is the, the one on Palumba is going to be brand new that's going to right, be constructed right. it's not there today Hazard's the retro he's fit. talking two uh, signs now Okay. Sorry, I apologize for that. I looked at the two signs; they look the same, and one's yeah, 22 feet up in the air. We're trying to make them look the same. That's yeah. kind of. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna open up to the public. Gentlemen, have a seat back there. And Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody in the audience that would like to come up and speak for or against public hearing 2965? <laughs> Anyone in the audience? 2965, for or against? Second time? 
Going for the third time? Nobody? Nobody would like to come up? Are you guys all set? Good to close the public hearing? Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I move we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Chair, I move for the approval of the resolution to approve public hearing 2965 as prepared by the Planning Department dated February 13, 2020 with the 21 conditions listed plus you know, including one site specific condition. Did you want to remove that one? That was the bond. No, I, I, or I the bond. I thought yeah. we, 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 we agreed to waive it. We yeah. were going to waive it? Okay, so so let me reiterate my uh, <laughs> my motion is, is that it, it will only include 20 conditions and we're going to remove the one site specific condition. Can I get a second? Second. Questions or concerns on the motion? All in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda. That, please. What's that? Who said? Who made the second? Thank Jean. you, Jen. Next on the agenda, public hearing 2966, 281 Abbey Road. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their regular meeting on Thursday, February 13, 2020 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application, public hearing 2966, 281 Abbey Road, special use and site plan application to allow the expansion of a non-conforming structure under Section 3.40.1D to accommodate a garage with above storage space and mudroom. Daniel Spazzarini, owner applicant, map 86, lot 270, R44 zone. Ken Nelson. Here. Charles Ladd. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Francis Alimo. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Welcome. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, I'm Dan Spazzarini of 281 Abbey Road. Tell us what you'd like to do. So I'm trying to build a garage mud room addition onto my house. And my house was rezoned after it was built. So it's now it's the setbacks are supposed to be 50 feet, but my house is 35 feet off the road. So I'm trying to just get a special permit to build my garage in line with the house, no closer to the road. Okay. That's pretty much it. Sounds like a Burnham Road again, which we set past precedence with that. The entire Burnham Road. They changed the zone. All the houses are over the front yard setback. Yeah. So um, he's just doing what he has to do. And <coughs> this is uh, something I think that the regulation should be changed. And if, if you read it a certain way, you could almost interpret it that it would be for new structures instead of existing structures. So our citizens don't have to come forward and spend this money on the plans and surveying and stuff like that and the time it takes. And I really think the commission should take a look at that because that would eliminate a lot of grief for the residents of Enfield. And actually, Lori, if you could put that on a future agenda for us to address that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jumped right on that. It's already on the list. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair, so what they did actually is change something and make all the existing structures nonconforming. Well, in his particular case, on his house, yes, I'm not sure about the rest of the street. No, the other example you were Burnham giving me, Burnham. Street, yeah. They changed the whole zone, which made the whole street, non every single resident who wants to put a garage on their house in line with their house has to do the same thing Mr. Spazzarini's doing. Wow. And I think it's a waste of money. The houses were built in that zone. They should mm -hmm. be grandfathered. I agree. So mm -hmm. we understand. We apologize. <laughs> we're following protocol. Yeah. Hopefully we get you out of here tonight. So. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? We're going to open it up to the public, and right. we'll call you back. Thank out. you. You're welcome. Anybody in the public that would like to come up and speak in regards to public hearing 2966, for or against, please come forward. Going for the second time? Anyone? 2966 for the third time? Nobody's here to speak. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. 
Second. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chair, I move for the approval of the resolution to approve public hearing 2966, um, dated February 13, 2020, <coughs> as prepared by the Planning Department with the 24 conditions it listed. There is one site-specific condition about the merging, merging of the properties. So um, I think there, we would leave that in place, so. I always thought that when you had a non-conforming lot and it was both parcels were in the same name, that they automatically merged to make them more conforming, correct? That That is something that is often done by the assessor, not necessarily always. So oh, no, I, I no. don't know why one why this would have or not have been right. merged? I'm speaking of planning. I know mean, nothing about assessing, but I was uh, under the assumption that if Joe Smith owned one lot that was nonconforming and the lot next to it was owned by Joe Smith, to make them more conforming, they merged mm -hmm. automatically. That's not zoning, right? There is a section of the regulations that does say that, um, I guess by, it's not filed on the land records that way, though, so it comes down to no, what I, legally. So, so yeah. zoning doesn't have the right to do it, but the, it, it, the zoning regulations, I guess, call for it, so therefore the assessor does that. So, so the building I, I, regulations call for it? Uh, well, I, I'm, is there actually a section in the zoning regulations? There, I there, is, yeah, there, there is, is a section in the, in the beginning rules. that says that for zoning purposes, Yep. Lots under the same yep. name are considered yep. merged, but that doesn't necessarily because mean that for land when record I bought purposes they two are. pieces of property, the lawyer told me don't put them all in the same name because then they will merge into one. So we have two separate, but you have one, so right. it would automatically merge. No, he has two, and he has right. to merge them. Right. And but that's I'm, I agree yeah. with everything you're saying, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. And if he were sitting here to build a second home, oh, that's different. They're going to make him unmerge the lots he wouldn't be but able now to. they're telling him they're unmerged he needs to merge them together and this is another thing with this town yeah that makes contractors pull their hair out because yep. it's another thing he shouldn't have to do either they're merged or they're not yeah. you know i bought property in this town mm -hmm. that didn't even touch each other it was in between there was a house in between uh -huh. and the town told me they were merged well how can two pieces that don't touch each other well it's ridiculous if you own them. and and that's something that this That's, commission, I really, we need to put our heads together and stop this because yeah. this is wrong. Well, anyways, we have a motion right. to. So, <laughs> questions or concerns? That <clears throat> one, your question was about one of the conditions. Okay, so we let that go. You're good with the conditions, Dan? Yep, I've already gone to the lawyer. I've gotten all the paperwork done, so. Okay. I'm good to go. All right, everybody good? Mm -hmm. All in favor? It's unanimous. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. We'll do it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. I be don't believe that there was a second on the actual motion. Didn't you second the motion? Yes, I did. You did? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Old business. Discussion regarding changes to section 30.30.7. 30 Accessory buildings. Mm -hmm. All right. There's so... Let me flip to it, sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so I sent a memo in your packets regarding um, this because, as you know, we have been working on getting the uh, height changes to accessory buildings changed in residential, commercial, and industrial zones from 12 feet to 15 feet um, and to prevent any more areas in the regulations where we find, we change one thing and then somewhere else in the regulations it's referenced and we have no idea. I literally went through and scanned the entire document to make sure we, that didn't happen again uh, for all of the regulations that we've recently wanted to put forward. So, um, and it was a good thing I did because I found that there are discrepancies with the, fl uh, with the lakefront overlay district, which I detailed in the memo, basically, um, Within the accessory building regulations, they also specify that accessory buildings need to be 
uh, a limit, a maximum height of 12 feet. I don't know if you guys wanted to change that to 15 feet as well in your regulations. Uh, but I also found that for some reason in the lakefront overlay district, they require accessory buildings to be 10 feet away from all property side and rear property lines, whereas in our regular zones that are bigger properties, it's five feet. So I just wanted to dis, uh, have a general discussion or give the commission some food for thought on, on that, uh, along with the fact that there's an entire another section of the regulations governing the same zone with respect to accessory buildings. So if I heard you correct, you know our regulations so well, you picked this up in your head. You didn't have to read anything. You know them by heart, right? That was a joke. <laughs> because she scanned them. Yeah, in her brain. <laughs> Commissioner Higley. I think the 10 feet was because in the overlay district, the, side, the property that touches the road is the backyard the property that touches the lake is the front yard. So that with the with the properties being so close together, they did that, I, I assume, for the neighbors so that they wouldn't have like a garage right up blocking their view when they're coming up their driveway. Well, that- Asking me? No, no, oh. I know, okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, that ended up being actually written in detailed in uh, section 4.80, which came after the lakefront overlay district and references not a lakefront overlay district, but a lake overlay district. And then the table on the front of the regulations says the lakefront overlay district is the lake overlay district, but there's two different references in the regulations. <laughs> All right, we're, we're talking about the height of the building. No, no setbacks. No. I thought you said no. how close it was. No, to the she brought that up, but that's no. not her concern right now. Her concern is the height of the building. Okay. What she's talking about is another whole issue. Yeah. We'll deal with it another time. So, right. Right. I, I also agree. It's going from 12 to 15 feet okay. throughout okay. the entire town. Yep. Okay. So, wherever it says in the regulation 12, I'm for moving it up to 15. That's what I thought we agreed on. Commissioners, Frank, Rich, you, you all agree? Mm -hmm. So I, that was our intent, is the entire town, even okay. at the lake. Okay. <laughs> then we'll amend that, and uh, it, that has been at the Capital Region Council of Governments long enough uh, that it should be ready to go on the next agenda, if you so wish. Okay, you don't need us to move on that or anything. No. no. Just, just, to be, just clarification. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, just to be clear, we weren't talking about Side yards, rear nope, yards. Okay. That's I just why heard I that come it. up for a second right, here. That's why I stopped it. All right. Just so I'm clear. Yep. I just Thank really you. wanted to bring that to your attention about all of the different things that sort of govern the lake right. overlay oh, district. I appreciate, a lot. I appreciate closer, it because we're dealing right. with this nonstop. And what you just did helps eliminate it. And if people had done that years ago, it'd make your job a lot easier. So thank you, Thanks Jen. for doing the I research. I appreciate that. that. Yep. Okay. So we're good. We're voting on right now is for only the lakefront over. No, we're not district. even voting on it. We already voted. Oh, okay. But they just wanted to clarify because it yeah. says in the regulations 12 feet for the right. lake, yeah. and did we mean to include that or not? Oh, okay. Yes. And you're for gotcha. it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so Mr. Chair, the, the lake is not going to be cut out of this new change. It's going to be included in it. Included in the okay. entire town. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, new business, site plan review, SPR 1803, 53 Manning Road. Anybody here? Come on up. Uh, if we have boards uh, for an easel, does that help? Oh, we have an easel. Kevin Rothschild Shea, Architecture EL. Uh, Matt Blanchard from my office. He could put the board right up there. And Chip Labonte. Hi, I'm Walter Labonte. I'm the owner of the property, KBRC Real Estate. <coughs> Are we free? Go right ahead. Excellent. 
Uh, do you want to say anything or I'll just jump in? No, ahead. just go ahead. So since we were here a couple years uh, and some months ago, received our original special permit where we uh, converted the original warehouse structure uh, to allow a portion of it to be uh, warehousing self-storage. Uh, <coughs> Recurring questions have come up that have prompted us to, to come back with this uh, modification to that uh, request to that permit. So the the drawing that's up in front of you, you can see in the the, the simple blue outline, the 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 blue that's outlined represents the entire building. The upper rectangle uh, represents uh, a two-story section of the building. Uh, in that permit, we were uh, required to. Uh, produce or include an additional means of egress out the second floor across the first floor roof, uh, traverse the building down a stair, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we included those in the permit uh, drawings and they are currently in the permit and scope of construction that's underway. Uh, the status of the construction relative special permit, uh, it started uh, uh, late spring, early summer and it continues to uh, move through with hopefully uh, completion coming up in the next uh, couple months with final site work to resume once uh, this kind of muddy, slushy winter sort of ends. Um, so what's come up uh, in the construction uh, all the way back to um, the permit hearing and when we issued the, uh, uh, or submitted on the building permit, uh, uh, Building Inspector Stedward uh, had some questions as to why we were uh, including this means of egress across the roof because it was somewhat unusual. Um, it, we explained the, the terms and how it came to be throughout the permitting process. Uh, he suggested we uh, follow up on that, in which case we did with uh, um, the fire chief uh, Earl Preventure, uh, which then led to a formal uh, submission to uh, the fire department and the state looking for uh, a modification to the code. Um, so we did that both on building during the permit process and the fire department uh, during the construction or post-building permit process. And the results of that came back both from building and fire that no mod request was required because no code modification was required, no uh, non-compliance was found, and no need to provide or build this extra means of egress across the roof in both the building and the fire codes. So we have uh, support from the local building the state building, the local fire, uh, and state fire that indicate that this additional item is, is not required. It comes at expense to the owner. It, it, it actually, as we originally were concerned, it runs contrary to some basic safety concerns about exiting people across a roof. Um, so the, the prime, one of the primary things we're here today is to talk about uh, or ask for to remove this egress component across the roof of a building that is not required by any applicable building or fire code. Uh, one, just for clarification, sure. who required it? This board. How did planning and zoning, it's not even in their purview. Because yeah. I remember that application because I was here and, and I thought that was part of your application that you were going to no. provide that in, and that it was necessary because you didn't have enough you know, steer exit you know, it, means so that because of the fact that you didn't have an adequate exit, you know, areas or widths or whatever, you had to provide something additional or else, you know, the, the, the distances between the exits were too far, so you had to provide something. So I thought that's how it evolved. But the thing is, you know, obviously if it's not required, I don't think that we would need to, you know, enforce that but I thought that was the whole reason why it evolved because I was here and I remember that yep. no, and I'm saying <laughs> okay you know what it, whatever you know if, if it's necessary it's necessary but you know I don't think that we specifically you know initiated the fact that it was necessary I think that sure. was part in, unless my memories yeah, well you know bad short of breaking into everyone's fragmented memory there was uh, under the purview of the board in terms of life safety and uh, under the special permit, uh, you know, the, the, the reach of the board uh, to ensure public safety and the safety of people in the building was, was uh, uh, accounted for. Uh, the question came up as to, you know, how that second floor or certain spaces egressed. We pointed out what was there. Um, and then there was, you know, some concern about egress and if that was an exit or what have you. So ultimately, to satisfy the board, we 
we included it, uh, you know. Uh, so it, at that time, it made sense because it was clear at the time that uh, uh, unless some accommodation for egress was made for that second floor, even though we weren't really doing work on the second floor, uh, we weren't going to satisfy the needs of the, the board and the permit. So that's, and obviously we're going back over two and a half years in terms of our memory banks now. But the, uh, the reality is we've spent the time backtracking with both building and fire. Uh, we have corroborating support and evidence that it's not a code requirement, and we're here formally to ask that it be removed. You know, uh, it's going to land in one of the final pieces of construction in the next couple months, mm -hmm. and you know, really now is the time for us to to get forward support. So, Lori, would the town allow the building official, fire marshals, anybody who goes out, Rick? Anybody who goes out to these projects during construction or even the permit process, would the building department or fire marshal sign off on something that didn't have adequate egress to satisfy them? Not to my knowledge. No. No. And that's, that's my concern about the planning and zoning on certain things, you know, and this is one of them that I think some, they overstepped their bounds or we did because I'm part of it now, but I wasn't part of that. So um, do you have anything? No? Okay. Commissioners, anything you want to add? So I just understand this correctly. In 2017, you came before this board with this information from the uh, state building official, mm -hmm. fire officials, saying it was not required. Correct. And it still ended up in your uh, condition of approval, per se. Oh, yes, sir. And you're here tonight to ask us to remove something that you didn't even need. That's our opinion. Too. Absolutely bizarre. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's, the, there's the some commission, confusion there, for the, sure. The commission overstepped, and, you know, this is... I would like to see us move this as fast as we can tonight to get these gentlemen out of here. It's yeah, ridiculous. And, and, and I agree. In terms of, like you said, I was part of that hearing, and, and I don't specifically remember, you know, having a concern to add, you know... Um, of an additional fire scape if it wasn't necessary. But, you know, again, my memory isn't that great. Maybe somebody on the, the commission required, had the feeling that it, it was unsafe. And, you know, rather than go through a long dissertation, it might have been easier just to pacify this one. And, and I would have to apologize for being involved in something like that because I was on a commission at that time. And there were quite a few issues on the table, so we understand. Uh, additionally, we have another point uh, to, to present, but don't want to dissect the conversation until you're ready. Um, uh, the other point is uh, to formally request approval uh, for a small portion of the building to operate uh, about 30, what's, uh, what about 3,782 square feet on the relative east wing. Uh, if, if it helps, I can step please. up and point to the area uh, to operate. You just need the microphone, sorry. Over here, the microphone. I'll flip the board and then come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> it almost seems like you guys were given that from the office. No, no, right. Yeah. Who no, 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 no. So that this exhibit represents the building floor plan. Uh, the first floor represents uh, 260,000 square feet. Uh, the small area shaded in yellow on the plan and also included in the uh, packet uh, is 3,782 square feet. Um, we are uh, in this. Uh, amendment asking for that space to operate as a business that does a small amount of service and repair uh, and distribution of uh, and sales of appliances but primarily they bring them in make any modifications or repairs and then ship them back out um, it's uh, generally speaking within the use tables it is in line with um, servicing, testing, repairing materials under the 6.2 table for industrial or office or business. Uh, it's allowed under site plan review. Uh, so since it was not in the original application, 
uh, the planning department uh, <coughs> suggested that we present it um, uh, for your consideration. What are the hours of operation? Chip? Um, I think it's just regular business hours, either 7 or 8 in the morning until about 4 or 5. And the reason I ask is because we have taken some serious heat over the truck traffic on Manning Road, which I'm sure you're aware of. And um, I just want to try to eliminate people coming down here all up in arms again. I want you to succeed. I want, I mean, you've done wonders down there, and I'll help you any way I can help you. But we got to also, you know, respect the neighbors who deal with the truck, truck traffic. Okay. So it's um, just the owner's truck, which is, uh, I think, probably like a, maybe an 18-foot box truck. Yep. Um, and so he mostly deals with, he, he was here but had to go for a child issue, um, uh, mostly deals with entire uh, uh, apartment complexes. And um, so he's bringing in, however, a truckload and taking them out, um, but he's not going in and out on an hourly basis. Um, I've never seen him there on weekends. Um, so it's oh, I, I don't care if he goes back and forth all day long. It's just yeah. 2 o'clock in the morning, oh, trucks no. idling on Manning Road. I mean, we've heard it all, and, you know, this is not going to be the case here. So, Oh, God, no. I mean, right? I mean, as you know, uh, when I first came in here a number of years ago, uh, Rick asked me about posting the property so that we could get rid of the idling trucks that we, at that time, as new owners, were not aware of. And I think that, you know, it's been an improving situation. Um, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any in quite a few years. But it's, post, it's posted so the police have the opportunity to tell people to get out and the like. Um, and, of course, going to self-storage is not going to be tractor trailers anymore. Um, and it's really just Brooks Brothers there for their uh, store fixtures uh, on the first floor. And then there's a beer company that's moving out on the second floor. So I want to create a working partnership with this, you know? I mean, we could resolve a lot of things working together as a town with them. The where? Go no, it's a site plan review. Uh, no. No, no, no. I meant business. Um, I can't go in there and buy a refrigerator after it's repaired, correct? No. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, sure. Three applicant. How many uh, people is this new uh, business going to employ? Do you know? Uh, I think there's about four people. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. Anybody else? So, so Anything? Mr. Chairman, just so I can, if I may. Absolutely. So, so what prompted this so uh, was the appliances were being kept outside, <laughs> including refrigerators with doors on. Um, so it was cited for notice of violation. And then when it came with this application, we requested that that be made part of this uh, change. Um, I just want to ensure that none of the, that he's clear that no more uh, appliances or any equipment are going to be kept outside during this period of time. Right. So um, since that time, if I can just absolutely point out to this space right here, where we gave the tenant the use of this space. Mm -hmm. Had been in this upper space here. We gave him that space, no increase in rent, under the condition that he take everything that was outside and put it in there. And I think that we've sent some pictures, and you probably come over and seen that the property looks a lot better in that area. It does, a lot better since that time. So, so they're in compliance now. They are presently in compliance. Good, good. I'm, sounds good. I'm ready. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Can I get him? Mr. Chair, I move to approve the resolution for site plan review 1803 um, with the 22 conditions and the one site specific condition that all the conditions of the approval public hearing 2874 will remain in effect. Second. Comments on the motion? All in favor? Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.
8-24 referrals to Broadbrook Road. Uh, so this was a referral from town council. Okay. <laughs> town council just to convey, um, it was a, a former school, I believe, the Skidiko school. Um, they just really want to put it on the market um, and get it sold. Uh, this is a project being um, uh, done through the community development department and it was referred to this uh, commission from uh, town council. And I provided some uh, background information, just the map on where it is, where any wetlands are, there's none on the property, and the assessor's card for your information, um, and the resolution from town council. So, as well as a proposed resolution for your consideration. So, I looked at it briefly, and it's kind of vague. Are they putting any historic restrictions on the property or any that? I mean, that school goes back at 1900. I remember um, a lady, Margaret Jasiniak, used to come and talk to the council. And every meeting, she was there. And she's no longer with us, but she used to talk about how she went to school there when she was a young lady and a lot of a lot of older huh? <laughs> that long ago <laughs> that long ago. and so do you have any information like that or is it just somebody can buy it and tear it down i i really i don't have any other information i don't know Lori, if you I, do i don't have a lot more information than that however um it's not in a historic district but um, we are working on historic district um, inventory. Mm -hmm. um, so until that occurs, we wouldn't have any really um, stronghold to keep it intact as it is. So, Commissioner Suzak. And, and unfortunately, I have had some discussions <coughs> with certain town councilors, <laughs> and I believe that for what I heard was that it was going to have a, a, you know, historic restriction associated with it, that you could modify that. You could modify the internal usage of, of the building, but you couldn't necessarily, again, tear it down and just build something new over it. And, and I thought that's what I had heard. Um, but and, you, and you that know, may but be. It, I haven't heard. I haven't but I, it. I, it's not in writing, so things could change. But you know, I th I think that the general intention was that it was not going to be allowed to be modified significantly beyond. You know, you can enhance it, improve it. You know, do modifications that would benefit the, the new owner, but that he wouldn't be able to just tear it down and, and use the land as you know, new pristine, developable land. Right, because I know like the church on High Street, they were supposed to put in restrictions that the uh, stained glass windows weren't to be taken out or sold. And I don't, when you guys got the 8-24 on that, does anybody remember if they saw anything about that? No, they said they were going to do that. I mean, is that part of our purview to make sure that that's in there? or? I've never sat on this side of an 8-24. I've always been sending it down. We could ask the council to consider that, correct? As part of the recommendation, I'm, I believe. <coughs> I was. As your recommendation, and I apologize. Should have, I should have known more about this item, and I uh, didn't have a chance to talk to Nelson about it. Commissioner Higgins. Um, there was at one time a very historic, the whole building's historic. And, and I know that one of our assistant town managers at the time had grave concerns about the bell. He was really, Dan Bigley, he was into the bell. And he um, had it stored, um, the council had it stored so that nobody could, um, you know, take it or demolish it. And so I, it, that's, that was going to be my thing. It's part of the building, so where is it? And can it be sold off? And you know, does it have to? St I, I would think it should stay with the building. But that's just me, and I would like to see some suggestions. We cannot make them do it, but we could do some suggestions on keeping and restoring the bell, um, keeping the um, maybe the front of the building, or um, you know, I well, mean, not making it a strip mall because it can be a strip mall in that district. Well, I would think the bell, if anything, goes to the historical society. Yeah. 
That's what I was also going to say. The um, if we could find the bell before we um, sold the building, maybe we could at least save the bell, put it in the historic um, society with a plaque. This was hung and used, whatever. Right, and, and the comment about it's not in a historic district. I understand that, but neither is the Hazardville Institute. And I just don't feel we should be, you know, I was one of the people who fought hard about tearing down Higgins. I was dead set against it. And, you know, yes, the building was in disrepair, but I, I see this school as the same thing. And, you know, if you guys are on board, I think I'd like to get a little more information from the town about how they're going to put this out there. Yep. You know, years back, I was actually looking at be involved with that because my wife wanted to do it. But, uh, the deal with the town in those days was you could live on the second floor, but you had to keep the first floor as it was if you leased it for a dollar or whatever you were going to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, I haven't heard anybody do anything with it since then. Yeah. But they were very adamant about the first floor had to stay uh. used as a public space or whatever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. You yeah. could rent it out, have meetings there, or all that kind of stuff. But the second floor, you could live on if you wanted. Somebody yeah. came in to have it an art studio and an art gallery, but that never went anywhere. Yeah. I believe the building's got brand new heating systems and stuff. It did back yeah. then, and not that long yeah. ago. But so, if you guys are on board with that, I mean, do do we just want to include that? You know, we would strongly recommend that. You know the nature and the features of the building historical systems, you know, be preserved? I'd just like to get a little more information. Because once we send it over, they we can don't do have whatever any, they yeah, want. Yeah, right. so yeah. Uh, if possible, and you well, know, share well, you can't do well, it with impossible. Well, on the conditions of sale, that's all you Well, know. no, no, but um, does, the does, this, does the town have a desire to see it utilized selling it to somebody or something you know a purpose that would be my my question is there a purpose hopefully that the town would like it to be used for i know you cannot do it but i know that the town can strongly yeah, urge i know that's been up for discussion for over 40 years and nobody's jumped all over it so no. i don't know how <laughs> that there must be somebody else yeah. for them to do that. no Mr. they're just putting it on the market yeah you know, it'd be a great little church. Maybe instead of a commercial building, they'll go there. Mr. Chairman, we're, the town is selling this property, correct, to put it back on the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. So how will we market it with restrictions? How, how would it's we, a historic building. But it's not historically, but, but is it we, historically we, registered? So No, it, I, I do not believe so. However, um, we d you can put restrictions on the sale of the property. I mean, you could say that you can't tear it down or you need to put that the would gingerbread. Be on the, that would be on the council side, though, wouldn't it? Not us. No. Uh, th that's correct, but, <coughs> uh, but it is this commission's purview to give that recommendation or, or require some feedback in the first place. Okay. You can't sell off all the old buildings in town and have somebody just tear them all down. There's so going to be no. No, I'm not. I'm not arguing that. But I'm just wondering if there is any uh, pushback for the. Uh, I know we have a. Uh, there was a, a contract with a realtor to right, sell town no. properties. Huh? It just doesn't say. I, I, I don't, just don't know if we're opening up a can of worms here as we try to get properties yeah, no, no, back on no, the tax rolls. Yeah. We can suggest. We can the council can do anything that. they want, but we as a board can suggest or request that they look at something. We cannot make them look at something. But it would be nice if we at least tried. I think Ken is right. If we tear down all the old buildings, what do we have left? Well, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just no, making sure that anything, any action we take yeah. isn't That's going to uh, cause any hiccups in, in, in the sale or, or, or in the agreement the town has entered into with the real estate company. That's all I'm saying. I mean, Commissioner Suzak. Again, I, I have to reiterate that it, I've heard that everybody recognizes that it is an historic building. It has some value, but the town doesn't have any need for it. So what they're hoping is that they could sell it to a private individual, 
recognizing that it does have some historic value and it does have some sentiment sentimental value to a lot of the residents in town but they would be allowed to do whatever they wanted to do with the building except tear it down or significantly you know de oh, no. deface it or Doesn't deform it or whatever doesn't even say that on well, well it never said it ne again you know I, I think that put it up for sale that's what that's they got that's yeah. it well <laughs> So what I'm hearing is before a recommendation is put forth by the commission, you want to, you would like to know whether or not there's some sort of protection in place against demolition and perhaps look into where the, the bell is located uh, before before your recommend, formal recommendation well, is sent to the Well, does the bell go with the building or not? And if it, you know, it should go to the Anfield Historical Society and not be part <coughs> of the sale. So... So we'll look into those things, uh, and we can bring that back to you for the next meeting. Yeah. I, I was just checking the PAR, the, uh, the report that we do every two weeks to the town council, and, and Nelson didn't um, say yes. To, he didn't um, talk to the historic value of it. So we'll find out, for yeah. get specifics for you before okay. we make a decision. All right. Um, we don't need to vote the table that or anything. No. Who the table is? Oh, I just asked. It should be. Oh, yeah. Motion to table. I make a motion we table uh, for uh, additional information by the council. Second. All in favor? Uh, other business. Review of bylaws. Awaiting review. The town attorney has been very busy, especially with the transitions that have occurred over even the last year or so. I mean, since Chris became the town manager and then, you know, then Maria became the town attorney and now she's retired and is coming back and now we have a new town attorney. So there's been a lot of turnover and a lot of work. So they're, they're trying to catch up to everything, though. So we're not ready to move on that? No. No. Okay. Um, B, general discussion and regulations and procedures. I have the bio. So I have um, got the request for proposals were given to you in your packets. This is for one, the comprehensive uh, update of the, I'll start with the uh, Plan of Conservation and Development. So for the most part, you don't need to be looking at, you know, the, uh, most of the background except for maybe selection process. What I really wanted to do is make sure that you are good with the overall scope and the intent of the request. So um, we all... Oh. We all know our PSED, this big book. I already got one. So there's certain elements that have to be discussed in the plan of conservation and development. And they're statutorily required housing, uh, mm -hmm. commercial, words, commercial development, residential development, infrastructure, all that good open shit. space, um, things of that nature. But then there's always those things that we, that are very specific to our town that we need to look at. So, um, so um, down on, in, under the overview, um, I talked about that we would want to include, but not be limited to, additional topics such as low impact development, complete streets, transit oriented development, workforce, affordable housing, sustainability, resilience and hazard mitigation planning, disaster recovery, the MS4, which is the uh, wastewater that, we, that is required to be monitored in town through the state or from the state by the town 
and goals for special districts. Um, and then I also mentioned the fact that we have our icons such as Lego, Mass Mutual, Hallmark, Enfield Square, and Thompsonville that need to be addressed as, as a, a priority development item. So um, I just handed out to you <coughs> Uh, the sheet that has a calendar on one side and on the other side, it has acknowledgments and it has the POCD steering committee. There were 19 members that were listed in the front of the current plan of conservation and development. So we're also going to need to create one of those steering committees. Um, and I didn't know how you would like to go about doing that, whether you wanted to kind of follow the same method that was done here. It looks like, you know, most of, uh, there were a lot of planning and zoning commission members, um, economic development representatives from most of the land use commissions. And I think um, quite a few town council members were on it, um, some from Board of Ed. Um, I think that in this town, we're going to be able to get people that are interested and in wanting to be on this. I've worked in other towns where I had to beg and I couldn't get anybody to come. <laughs> so um, I, I think that's great that I think we'll be able to get a lot of people on here because it, it's, it's Enfield's plan. It's not the town planner's plan or the planning and zoning commission's plan. It's the town's plan and to get as much input as possible is the best way to do things. So. Um, do, do you have any comments as to um, the, the RFP for this, um, for the Plan of Conservation Development? It talks also about, um, you know, the data update and assessment, the fact that it should be easily read, yes. easily, you should be able to open it up and pretty much understand it immediately. It should be heavy with graphics. Um, so um, I talked to that about, um, unfortunately, I didn't bring the one that I marked up. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, so those people are gone. So it talks about the project approach and, you know, how, how, the, you know, how a consultant would approach it. So that's the type of thing that we would be interviewing them on. God, I had all these notes on this other one that I had. Um, So revisions to the POCD, um, they will develop, refine, finalize, and incorporate recommendations to the goals, objectives, and strategies in the POCD, as well as add tables, graphics, and mapping as necessary. Um, we'll try to keep on a year to a year and a half schedule. We may need to seek an extension just because we're starting a little bit late. Um, so the extension would be actually from the Office of Policy and Management. Um, as long as we are actually working on it and making progress, they usually are very good about, you know, granting any extensions of that nature. So, um, so that's the POCD one. If, uh, I'll go on to the other one if you have any, if you don't have any questions on this at this time. We can always go back. Okay, you're good. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah? What's the, is there a budget for this? There we is. have a line item budget? There is. We're putting out an RFP? Yep. Okay. Yep. And that, but that's not, that number is not disclosed, obviously, because we're um, putting it out I'd rather not disclose it on the record right now. Okay. So I, I don't remember the exact number anyway. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> any other thing? This is required by um, state statute that it gets revised every, every 10 years. Every 10 years. This is, a, is, this is, is there an unfunded mandate. Yeah. Right. But so it's also it, a really is, good. Is, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Really to, good what? It's, it's an unfunded mandate, but it's also something fantastic for the town to do because this is this is our map for the future, and it's a great way to um, follow. You know, create what you want to do, and then it, try to follow through it. Follow, yeah, follow through the plan and, as far as implementation. So. And, and I think that's where I was going with this. Is, is there any way, Mr. Chairman, and I don't know, you know, I've got to go through you to, to ask about this, but is there any way for this document to have teeth? I mean, it, it seems to me like over the years it's used as a bargaining chip almost. People, will, the applicant will say, well, I used the plan. And the commission will say, well, you didn't follow the plan. But it just, is it just going to be 
a very I know it's good to do and have a vision, but is, is this a very well, expensive document? If you look at the back of the document, there's every department has a responsibility project in there. That's right. And nobody did any of them. Yep. So <laughs> well, maybe we need to uh, make well, sure that whatever responsibilities have to be done with this document that they get done. Right. So I mean, I'm so not, I'm not part, part of that with responsibility the would be to make sure that our regulation mm -hmm. is in line with that plan because it's not. Well, so, well now I think that's well, where I'm they going with it. The plan, yeah. right. that was they're part not of meeting regulations, that right? That right. We so, didn't do. Well, I guess that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it right. seems like that it has no teeth and it's used as a bargaining chip. But, right. When she brought yeah. this up a couple of meetings ago, we need to be more involved to make sure. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a couple liaisons sitting at the meetings who are very familiar with the regulations mm -hmm. and say, well, that doesn't meet the regulations or we need to change the regulations right. to meet it. Right. But you can't have an applicant say, I followed the plan. Yeah. And then we say, well, that's not our regulation. Exactly. Thank you. And that's exactly all, right. Right. Very good point. Yes. But right. our regulation was totally different. Right. And that makes everybody look bad. Right. Them, yeah. us, well, everybody. I guess that's exactly where I'm going with this. Well, so we're going to make all this effort. What could happen. Right. 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 That wasn't so, a Yeah, but happen. they emphasized many times in their application that they followed the, the document. That they were looking at, you know, our future vision of the mall area. Right. Well, that, that plan you know, is more of an advisory guide. Right. That but. does not have to be followed, but it should be. Right. I mean, if, so, I'm all for doing it, but I'd just like to see it function better, I guess I'm saying. Right. Well, we don't have, so, we don't so, have any choice. It's state mandated. Oh, I understand. Yeah, right. And that's how I opened my but, question. I understand it's state mandated. It, it I asked about a budget. Mandated, yeah. but, but I would like to see a way that's where not, this gets incorporated into what we do more. Right. So, right so, in that the community development director is the enforcer. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, uh, so that's part, so, so when yeah. we cr when we go through the plan, mm -hmm. what we basically do is we go to all the different boards, <coughs> commissions, and departments, and we say, okay, in the current plan, these were the goals that you wanted to accomplish in the last ten years. Which ones of these have been accomplished? Probably none. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe not. Right. But I'm just saying this is the process. So, right. and and then we're going to say, okay, so um, what of those uh, goals that you didn't get done would you like to still get done, and what new goals do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And so then, and you go through that process. It's it's a, it's a long process. Right. But it, it's 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 needed, well, and it, it it gives us the guidelines for how we want to develop our zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. because we want our zoning regulations to enforce what we want as our goals, right? Mm -hmm. Part of that is developing an implementation, a POCD implementation committee. I believe it was, well, that is actually in the POCD currently. I don't think that committee was ever created. Okay. So that is one of the first things that once once we adopt a new plan, mm -hmm. we create that implementation committee, and they are the ones that are going to try to oversee all the different departments to make sure that they're following the plan. So, okay. So, you know, I I don't know what's happened in the past. I can only go forward in the future and mm -hmm. and try to do things uh, as I think they should be done. Well, I'm very encouraged by what you're saying. I think that's so, great. You know, because and and. I can tell you, because I've served on a couple of committees in, in here in Enfield uh, for developing and redevelopment and plans going forward, I think twice, mm -hmm. where a lot of money was spent on consultants and engineers, and the documents were made. Everybody on the committees were very excited, and nothing ever happened. And it's frustrating. And I know, like I said, I served on two of those committees. Yeah. So we're going to involve the citizens, and it's great to have them involved, get their input, and then spend a lot of money and do nothing. And we're doing it only because the state is telling us we have to do it. But let's do something with it. Mm -hmm. And if we have those committees, maybe we still have the public in, involved on these, yeah. you know, a, after it's implemented, after it's, after it's a, voted upon and we accept right. it. Once, once it's approved, then that's, that's where the work begins. Right, not I just mean, take it and yeah, put it on the shelf no, no, for $30,000. I don't know shelf, it's $30,000, so, but... So what are the but, other things that well, is great what, about... Well, the, <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I, I just, well, Mr. Chairman, I just hope you understand what I'm, where I'm going here with this. I just want to see it happen. And, I did. We addressed yeah. this two meetings ago. Yeah. That's why we're going to put liaisons from the commission 
on that mm-hmm. to okay. address. And it sounds like you would be a very good liaison. <laughs> well, well, you so, you know, might, you might like be the chair. Not yet. <laughs> well, I, I need to learn and study um, the planning, uh, the planning uh, regulations and codes more. But um, no, as, as long as we're going to utilize it the way it's supposed to be utilized and, and move forward. Right. I know we can't fix anything, like you said, that happened in the past. But it's okay. frustrating because I've been involved with these kinds of things that a lot of money got spent on and nothing happens. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's, I guess, my piece. Yeah. Commissioner Suzak. Because the only thing I'd like to add to that is, is that a lot of these things are out of our control in terms of, you know, we can plan, we can change the zoning, but we need somebody who can actually physically make the changes that we're advocating so that, you know, we need a developer to come in. We need... You, you, the town to be involved in terms of, you know, I like the, the, the idea of this implementation committee because of mm-hmm. the fact that you could assign one person to each department or possibly two people to each department that would th- you go after those departments to say, you know, you really should be doing something like this and you really should be doing something like that and have a meeting every single month and, and find out, you know, what have you done that you know, we had discussed before so that, again, so we don't have a whole committee meeting with, with a department, but mm-hmm. just certain, you know, subcommittees meeting with each department and then those subcommittees sort of <coughs> referring back to the implementation committee so that everybody has an idea and, and there is some impetus that ke- keeps going on because I don't, I think that what, what you need to do is actually start the dialogue with the department heads, with, you know, the, the actual departments themselves to say, you know, this is what the, the plan of conservation development says. What are you doing? And nobody ever does that. And and if you dog them enough, to, to, they might start doing it. And I think that that's what we need to do. We need to start that ball rolling so that there is some conversation between everybody involved. And, and I think the other thing that's, that's really wonderful is that um, we could get all of the people that are working on creating the plan since they're already energized and and like interested you know try to get those people to be on that implementation committee so they could carry help carry through the goals that we've all decided on so a- another aspect of the POCD is that if this if the town wants to receive any grants from anywhere you have to show that a lot of times that you have those certain aspects in your plan before they will even issue that grant to the town. So you have to show you have <coughs> affordable housing aspects, things of that nature. You almost have to always have something that, you know, if you're going for a grant, if it's not in your POCD, you're less likely to get that grant. So, so, um, Anything else with that right now? And again, we can go back to this. So, so as we also had discussed um, when I first started, is uh, the need to update the zoning regulations. And I think it comes up at every meeting we have that we really need to update the zoning regulations. So the plan's going to help us gu- help guide us as to what we need to update in the zoning regulations. But who's going to help us? Hold on, hold on. on. You guys have to do it all by yourself. (laughs) No, 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 not at all. Someone said was going to help us. Oh, no, 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 we we will get consultants. So, um, so in in with the uh, overview of what we really need to do with the zoning regulations, I also listed a number of elements that really need to be focused on uh, the low impact development, you know, this is a green infrastructure, things of that nature. It works with climate change, uh, resilience, hazard mitigation planning, equitable and diverse planning, workforce slash affordable housing options, complete streets, non-point source pollution and MS4, uh, you know, how to work with our agriculture and farming, Adaptive reuse, we're talking about selling the grain. How, what if they want to come in for a school or if they want to come in for residential? What sort of ap- adaptive reuse do we have for that or for Blair Manor or something like that? So, I mean, these are things that are coming up more and more and more. So we need to address them in our zoning regulations. Um, signage, always the bane of everybody, especially um, 
zoning enforcement officers um, existence, transit oriented development, um, sustainability, resilience, disaster recovery, uh, brownfield remediation. So those are just some big ticket items that, you know, it's, it's kind of like um, bringing everything up to date. You know, these are the things that all the towns are looking at now. So um, one of the other things that I added in here is that although these are both separate requests for proposals, that our goal would be and our desire would be to hire one firm to do both. So um, when they apply, we'll be asking them to s state whether they're just applying for that one or for both, both the RFPs. So it, it, it would be um, wonderful to ha have the same consultant to be in involved with both aspects so things get carried over from one to the other and it's consistent and they, al they would already have that knowledge because they're already working on the other one. So. Makes sense. Um, I'd like to get this going as fast as possible because the sooner the better. I did put together this. So if you look at your calendar, today's the February 13th. Um, assuming I get approval from this commission tonight and then um, just uh, A-OK -okay from finance to, to move forward with it, you know, make sure that they're happy with the insurance clause and things of that nature. Um, I'd like to try to get the RFP out next week. Um, and just remember that Monday for here is a holiday, so we're not open Monday. So I was looking at maybe the 18th or 19th to get the RFP out. Um, you could see the circles is when we have our planning and zoning commissions meetings. Um, then I would say that the RFP would be due in-house here on the 16th of March. So that gives almost a month for um, the consultants to get their project planning together for us. So once we do that, then we need to have a subcommittee to go through all the RFPs and narrow it down to the top two, three, five, what, however many we decide to have. You know, maybe we only get three applicants and then we just interview them all. Or maybe we get 10 and we need to narrow it down to th three or four of them. So then I was thinking uh, we can possibly have interviews um, April 1st or 2nd. We actually do have a conflict with r the rooms on the 2nd. I think both the Thompsonville and this room are taken so on the 2nd. The so I would say the 1st. Um, and then, you know, we go on from there and work on contract with the applicants. Who would you suggest would be on the subcommittee? Um, first off, they have to, whoever it is, needs to have a lot of interest and want to go to a lot of meetings. So I mean, just be... Planning uh, and zoning, town council, yeah, yeah. board of ed. Uh, you know, for selecting the consultant, absolutely a subcommittee of planning and zoning. And if you'd like, you know, somebody from maybe you know, one of the other land use commissions, maybe inland wetlands, um, that could be as well. But it's usually mostly planning and zoning commissioners for selecting the consultant. Okay. Um, but after that, as many people as possible. Right. After um, that. As possible, but business. but with that, but without making it too too large, because then uh, once you get too many people, then you have um, it's hard to get con consensus. So. so there was 19 members last time. There was 19 members. So what do you suggest? Now, I, I, what do you suggest this time? I, you know, I, I think we need to see who has the great interest. Um, you know, 19, 20 members is not horrible. I mean, I couldn't get two when I was doing this in my previous town. So, I, you know, the fact that I saw 19 people that attended these meetings, that's fabulous. So. Are you going <laughs> to pick us? A person of renown in town to be chairman, or how's well, that going to We did Martha work? McLeod last. That's why yeah. I'm asking. Very. She's no longer in the area. So. No. Right. Uh, well, well, I wouldn't be selecting somebody that doesn't live in town. No, no. no. Oh. I'm just saying, are we going to pick somebody that's somewhat well, renowned in town to be chair, or are we just going to? Well, well, I think we could we could work on that. As you know, I I could work on the 
procedure for selection and and how you're going to do the chair and stuff like that as we're waiting for the RFP to come back. I mean, she was a great chair for that one. Okay. But I don't know too many other people in town that are as qualified as she was. <laughs> she, many, you know, again. that are volunteer for that. You know, um, who would, I believe she. I think would be phenomenal for that. Would be Scott Copen if he would do it. Maybe. So Talk it would, about somebody who knows and loves the town. Oh, I know. And it would I be great if you asked around for idea. those. I'm not going to steal that from him. So, mm -hmm. so back to the RFP. You, you know, a lot of the people in town where I, I may not, I may have met them, but I don't have a rapport, or I don't, or I've never we'll met them. We'll come up with somebody. I'm yeah. Sure, so I mean, so. if you could start asking Absolutely. around, saying, "Hey, who's you know who's interested? You know, let us know." So. We could start that process as well. It's pretty much a token chair, but it's still hmm? it's, uh, mm -hmm. kind of an honor. Right. Just, just a question back on the RFP. You talked about the two scopes mm -hmm. and having one consultant. So mm -hmm. is the RFP going to go out in that way? Because I, I would prefer just having one company do both pieces. Uh, the RFPs are going to go out together but as separate items. But under the very first part of, of the each RFP, it says, please note, the town is also seeking an RFP for the other project. Um, uh, it would be the town's desire to hire a consultant that could imp implement both projects in conjunction with each other. So we can't hey. require that. Mm -hmm. No, but that's good. I, I like but, that language. But, I, you know, I think that, you know, that's in there. Involved. Because I think we'd be just reinventing the wheel and probably spending more money if we had different separate consultants. Yeah, right. So I, 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 I like that language because that will really, um, that would come on to us later to make the selection. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, yep. That was on your toe. Um, <laughs> did you go? Yeah. You no, know, I I did uh, put things in there that you know we we were. Um, you know, oh, let's see. He went to some of them, but he uh, wasn't. I'll just read this. The goal is to develop to user. No, oh, sorry. He's healthy enough to do it. That's a lot of work. So uh, with the zoning regulations, I, I did say the goal is to develop user-friendly, permissive regulations that incorporate new and current concepts and also address many of the special development challenges, such as the reuse of, as I said, Mass Mutual, Hallmark Lego, the Square, Hazardville, Route 5, Thompsonville Overlay Districts, repurposing of closed schools and down and rezoning of the majority of our residential neighborhoods. See, I already addressed that. <laughs> Such that they will no longer be non-conforming. Because if you look at, I'd say probably 70% of our residential subdivisions, they're all non-conforming to the current zone. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's a big uh, fix for us. So. Again, we want to make these simple. We want them easy to read, easy to follow, very permissive. I mean, if we could allow something without having to come here for a special permit, boy, that would be great. It's business friendly, it's economic development. So, but that doesn't mean that you can't require special permits for certain things. I, but, you know, for, like the <coughs> application that came tonight with the little um, warehouse for the fix it for the repair shop, you know, that should be a slam dunk. It shouldn't have even gone to you. That should have been. Well, that's you know, already a CROG, right? Administrative no, approval no, no, change. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Right, right. That's what you're talking right. about. Yeah, yes. that's what I'm talking about. You know, to make right. it simple. Absolutely. To make it easier for people well, to follow yeah. and understand Principal. and easy to get yeah, approvals. Over there somewhere. Would it be easier? Again, would, yeah. would it be easier for you just to write a new one? Instead of going through and seeing all the redundancies, well, I think well, it's kind. Of, that's kind of what I've implied is that we kind. Of, this I think I called because comprehensive I, I, update of the infield zoning regulations. You could just call that a rewrite, right? Because once you take a document and you change it and change it and change it and change it, right? It's it just it's like telephone tag. You know, it, it just gets so convoluted through the process and we end up getting caught every time and that's got to stop mm-hmm you know well you I can mean, see this this was updated in January 2002 11 13 14 17 and 19, 19. 
And unfortunately, a lot of times, what happened with uh, what Jen did to going through the regulations and making sure that all of the the uh, oh, the heights of the sheds the references were taken care of or amended sure. that didn't always happen with all the amendments that went through and that's where that's what's gotten us into the the bind we're in right now and so um, we, right, we will probably end up creating essentially new regulations we'll probably you know we'll keep the essential stuff but we'll add in the right. things that we need to be addressing <laughs> And once that's done, it's going to save you guys a lot of time. For her to go line by line through the regulations to find mm -hmm. this, I mean, I appreciate well, it the huge. The computer did it. Yeah. <laughs> but the time it takes, what's that? <laughs> the computer does it, but it's still yeah. time consuming. Yeah. I do. I search keywords and I, <laughs> for, and. You were well, better off just time. with the, you know the regulations and you found this, so just keep it there. Keywords, the you lost me on keywords. Well. What does that even mean? <laughs> um, okay. Mr. Chair, you were explaining some of the things that we want to look at, and how about wetlands maps? Now, I'm not sure. I might not understand this correctly, but That's are we using current wetland maps from the 1960s or 50s still? Yes, we are. So I would like to see that updated. I don't know. I think we mm, UConn does it for. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure. Can you educate me a little bit on that? Because I yeah, think that's ridiculous. Because we may have good developable, developable land in our community that we're right. looking at it with ancient maps. Right. So so, so the wetlands maps were based on an aerial photograph that was done early 60s. Based wetlands based regulations based. came into effect in the 70s. And um, I don't think any of the towns, for the most part, has have had the the flyover for wetlands again. And that's something that I was going to bring up with the DEEP, DEEP, and you know Yukon, to see if that would be something that would be feasible, and or if if there's any plans for that. But that is not your purview. Yes. That is the Wetlands Commission. That, I, those I regulations, that map, it's not this commission. But a part purview. part of this plan we're doing, this document that we're putting out, that we're going to have developed, mm -hmm. shouldn't that be addressed or somehow? Well, well, one, it could be a goal, but then we have to figure out how to implement that goal. So, but um, because that is something I, I that just I was afraid that there's thinking about. I'm myself. just afraid that we have some great land. I mean, look at our industrial park. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there could be some great. Uh, parcels in there that could be developed yep. and uh, I'm not sure how they see a bug from a plane because somebody goes in and sees a bug somewhere and all of a sudden you can't build or how do you see a frog I, I, I just I would like to see that addressed yeah. you know what? Yeah. Commissioner Higley I think it's wetlands can be confusing and I understand about the maps are old, but wetlands are state mandated and they're based on soil types. Mm -hmm. uh, poor draining, um, uh, alluvial soils, and you cannot change that. In other words, in the industrial park, there are wetlands. And even if it looks like wonderful land, you can't go build on wetlands. The state would not allow it. And if you didn't, if you didn't um, uphold the wetlands, with the Wetlands Commission, the state would just come in and take it over. So our hands are tied as a town. Uh, but I, I hear what you're saying. I agree with what you're saying to a point, mm -hmm. but you can't rule wetlands with an iron fist. And if you've got a company coming in that is willing to trade mm -hmm. land yes. for land yes. and create wetlands yes. to use wetlands, that's how we assemble properties yeah to create buildable land like Commissioner Alimo is talking about. And that's why on the agenda coming up, mm -hmm. we are gonna have a serious discussion about merging wetlands back with planning and zoning because it wasn't that long ago we were one board because it'll eliminate a lot of the repetitive questions. Mm -hmm. What is the better impact for the town? Giving them a waiver on a side yard setback or trading off wetlands somewhere. And the two boards need to work together. And right now we're two totally opposite boards. I have asked Jen mm -hmm. to put it on, I believe it's on our next agenda, yeah. to have a serious discussion. And this is exactly why. Mm -hmm. Because what you're saying, 
I'm ahead of you and I'm working on it. We need to come up with a way to move Enfield forward. Our industrial park looks like a ghost town exactly. the way it's laid out right now. And if we can create, you know, a two acre parcel out of the hundreds of acres there and come up with a happy solution everybody can live with, great. But right now, yeah, we do that with does Eppendorf. their thing and we do our, we absolutely do we do. So I'm, I Ms. just didn't get into that, I just was getting into right. definitions. Well, and we and the town council did it with the hotel, yeah. you know. But through the chair to Commissioner Higley, I, I think I, I disagree with you a little bit because I think when people come in, they use the wetland map as part of their application and they'll just say, well, you're within 100 foot of a wetland. I mean, how do we know for sure? And, and let me finish, and there is modern ways of mitigation that weren't even in existence in the 1950s and 60s. Um, so, I, 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 and I, I really focus on an industrial park. Right. I mean, I think it, it, it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. And that was, I don't even want to get into how that all happened with the industrial park. But. Commissioner Suzak. Yeah, I, I think that what we need is, we, you know, we, we have to recognize that there are going to be some wetlands, <coughs> but you need creative zoning and creative design Thank to m move around those wetlands in a manner that still allows the wetlands to exist, but allows for buildings to actually be constructed. I think our biggest problem is that we have relatively large lots that are zone industrial. And the fact that normally an industrial building needs a large footprint in order to be a manufacturing or, you know, or it, unless it's some really small thing, but th those aren't really viable things that we're looking to achieve. And, and they need large parking. If they have a large volume, that then parking is associated with that. So I think that realistically zoning it as industrial land it would be a good concept, but but it doesn't lend itself to the kind of soils and the you know the the the, the, the situation that's there right now. So I think that what we need to do is relook at how we're zoning that in order to make it a little more creative or allow it to be more creatively used. So in in that sense, I think that you know wetlands. They're wetlands, and I've served on both boards, and it, it's not a mystery to me, but. It, I think that, again, you have to be a little bit of a creative. You can, you can do it right and, and also accomplish something, but you have to be creative. You can't just look at something and say, well, this is what it says and I can't do it any other way right. because you're not going to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. And that's why wetlands cannot be creative by adjusting a side yard setback or a backyard or where if the boards were together or work together, which we don't, then you could absolutely rich. Creative is the key word, and that's, and I think we could do wonders with a lot of land, because today's with the 200 foot setbacks and the restricted areas, and I mean, 90% of this town would never have been built if we went by today's standards, so. Yeah, you know, you, you go to some cities and they have beautiful river walks, with hotels 10 feet from rivers, Chicago. You don't think that was a wetland? Up in Mass. Uh, I mean, come on. Uh, so we have to get creative, like Rich said. Up in Mass, way. where we're building, you know, mm -hmm. they're building right in the marshland. Yeah. You know, well, that's all wetlands. There's, But there's modern ways to mitigate. Right, and, so okay, we beat that. Yeah, so that's going to be part of it. Sorry, I think that's about it. If you had, I, I, I assumed you kind of read through these and have a pretty good understanding as to what we're doing. If you have any questions, comments, if you re read through them, you know, over the next week and or the next weekend, maybe. If uh, you have any other suggestions or comments as to wording or, Oops, I know I still have a couple tweaks just to make sure that, you know, everything is... Uh, Chairman, one more. But um, or if you have any other questions. Oh my God! I don't. What's Hazardville Water? Mr. Chair, I'll make that motion that we move this administrative approval up an agenda to our next discussion. Second. All in favor? 
Hi. I apologize. That's okay. I don't see a pad, you know, so I figured you're not a reporter. Understood. So can I, Mr. Chairman, I have one more question. I was going to bring it up in a correspondence. Maybe in, this is the time to, to ask the question. I just, well, okay, well, it's about a zone. I just had a question and I'm not familiar with it. I don't know. I'm going to wait. I'll wait. But we can get him up. Hi, I'm Tim Mulcahy of PDS Engineering in Bloomfield, Connecticut, and asking for administrative approval for lot number zero, I believe, on Taylor Road. Trying to move it uh, to the north, I think about 22 feet, so better use of the property. And one of the intentions is, over the next probably four or five years, is to put uh, solar canopies up. So that's pretty much the big gist of why I'm here. No impact of the town? Lori, no change? Nothing. Uh, no, n n there. Um, it wouldn't create any uh, nonconformities or really any changes to the site. It was conforming when it came in. You approved it. Moving it 25 feet would not really change anything other than it moved 25 feet. Sidewalks, parking lots, everything's going to stay the same. Yep. Yep. I move that we allow administrative approval for XZA 20 dash, oh no, excuse me, SPR 18040 Taylor Road. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. You're all set. I Sorry apologize. for the That's delay. Okay. So uh, can You're I just interject? I've been here for a little while. I've heard all your comments. So I'm a developer, builder. I own, uh, you know, Pearson, obviously. And so I'm partners with them. I can, I can honestly attest to everything that you said tonight. It's very conducive to people like me because um, I build all over the state. I own all over the state. I own in Mass, too. So your thoughts and your recommendations are astounding compared to other municipalities. I can tell you that right now. We're trying to get Trust back on track. Trust me when I tell you that. I live in Longmeadow. I, I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. so I, I'm through here every day, but um, a lot of towns aren't as forward thinking. So see, he just committed to 200,000 square feet as soon as we do this. Thank you. <laughs> Trust me, I, I own some stuff in Enfield. I have some stuff all over. Um, but yeah, so Great. I can just tell you, you're well, on the right we track. Just got one member to, we got one member to committee. <laughs> lives in Make sure was, oh, you live the long. time. <laughs> have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, correspondence. But I, I, oh, I, I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, I, I just wanted to know if I should move forward with the RFPs as is, or? I, I was going to interject that. I think that you should move forward with the RFP. The only thing that I see is, is that your due date is, is March 16th, which is a Monday. And in all your written documentation, you have it on a Wednesday. And, and I, I think that sometimes well, it, it's yeah. difficult to, to use a Monday when, when you need to get a proposal out. A Monday doesn't give you, you know, you have to be working over the weekend or get it done on the Friday before. And if you wanted to actually get some additional applications, you know, submitted or the potential for additional applications submitted. If you did it on a Tuesday or Wednesday, it allows them a Monday to actually look at it again, you know, fine, you know, tune their their proposals. Because a Monday application is, is it's always tough to get up on, on a Monday and, and have it in before 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. or whatever. Yeah, so, um, so that, you know, a, a midday day would probably be better, would be the recommendation that I would make. Okay. I, it's funny because I was thinking, well, I was going to put it the 13th, and I was like, well, I'll give them the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, yeah, but that's Friday the thirteenth, so you don't want to do that. It's superstitious. Oh. <laughs> so, um, you know, maybe we can make it like the eighteenth. Um, the thing, that I, what I was looking to do was have enough time for whoever the subcommittee is to figure out who we want to interview, have time to review the applications and and make a decision. <coughs> and that, so if. Um, it basically only gives us a week and a half if I make it like the 18th to do that. See, 
you know, it's... Or, or you can always make it Tuesday the 17th, but it gives them at Tuesday? least yeah, at least a full day Monday to, to, to okay. do something. I, I have no problem. I, it's a great idea. I have no problem with that. So make it the 17th for the RFP to be due. And this is also all assuming that I could get these out next week based on the other reviews that have to occur. <laughs> so. One of the problems we had with uh, a couple of the applicants were... They were so far away. They coming down from Buffalo or something. We had to schedule meetings to their convenience, which uh, wasn't always the best. <laughs> um, I have a little clause in here saying that the. Um, I mean, they were a great company and they did great work, but you had to schedule around when they were living. Um, so they should have proximity to work area to reduce travel time and associated expenses. Well, they claimed that wasn't a problem at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, then they get we snowed more out more and more times. into it. <laughs> yeah, well, coming out of Buffalo, you yeah. can't always get out. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it was a good company and everything. It just was hard to schedule mm -hmm. with them. So do you want to form the subcommittee now? Because you're running out of time here. Do, do you you're going want to have to, to go to wetlands and get you're going to get a couple off of wetlands? Well, I think I think for just the consultant, the the the, the review of the consultants themselves, I think um, you know the planning and zoning commission would be suffi sufficient. But you don't have all of your members here, so I don't know if any, if anybody wants to volunteer and we could call the other members and just say, you know, by the way, we're going to be doing this. Mary, you know. everybody else is an alternate. I was on the last one, so I'm no. familiar with some of the stuff. So, so you're on? Yes. Charlie, okay. If I lived that so, long. So, well, so, so this is, right now, long. we're just so forming a committee to review the consultants' like RFPs so we can decide who right. to interview. Rich and Charlie. Rich? Jen? Anybody well, else? Rich and, and Charlie. And, and Mary Scott will probably be on it. Mary Scott wants to be on the the, other one. the big part yeah, of it. This so is this is, I mean, you guys have been in business, everything. You're, I, I th I'm comfortable with yeah. both of you, absolutely. Yeah. So Charlie, Rich, and Ginny? No, just right? Charlie and Rich. Oh, that's a band. That's a group, isn't it? Isn't that a group? Rich and Charlie, Charlie and Rich? Is that a band? <laughs> Group so, what? so we're just going to have the two, you, we're only, you're going to have two people reviewing the consultants for and you interview. Yep. And I, I'm, I'm and just asking. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not saying that's yeah. good or bad. I'm just clarifying. Absolutely. So it's Charlie and Rich. Probably should be more than two to just to, to pick the company, though. To pick them, but you guys are going to. No, to pick them, them, you could all be on the panel. Yeah. You could, right. I mean, we're going to set a special meeting so you could do the interviews with. But. The entire planning and zoning commission yeah. here. Yeah. You do? Yeah. So, just two for Charlie. Okay. Yeah. You guys will weed through them all because I know what the process is like. Yeah. But the chairman, should he be on it? Rich and Charlie. <laughs> I, I I think I've heard Rich and Charlie. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> And, and Mr. N Nelson, Rich. and Chairman Nelson should be on it, too. You need me, you know how to get a hold of me, I'd be there, but I have faith. I, it, it's up to you, I, you know. No, I'm very, I'm very comfortable Staff with Staff will obviously be part of it, so. The extensive knowledge on everything we're talking about. Rich has been in business for years, so he knows the business side of things. Charles in business, too, right? Off and on, yeah. Yep. I, I mean, we did it. We just did it on the health board, and you know, the inefficiencies in a company are going to shine right through. So, there's a lot of good companies out there that oh, there is. will be very interested in this. In the this, one from I Buffalo think. was great, except for <laughs> blizzard time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, staff, Rich, and Charlie. Okay. And the entire commission. So they'll come back, discuss it with us, well, and then the entire commission will make the vote. They'll present yeah. to the whole commission. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good. Okay. 
Correspondence, hey. Connecticut Federation of Planning and Zoning Agencies, 72nd Annual Conference. So, that happens to fall on March 26th, which is your regular yeah. meeting night. That means it's on our meeting night. So, if if you all wanted to go, and or if a majority of you wanted to go, I suppose we could always uh, move the meeting night yes. to maybe that Wednesday, or we're going to have uh, a, follow, a meeting the following week for um, interview of the. Is tokens. that in the budget, or is that uh, out of our pocket? We have some money. I don't think we have enough money to have everybody go, but if everybody were to decide to go, I would see what I could do. The ZBA tends to like to go as well. In discussion um, with Raquel, we were looking at budgets actually, and there are awards associated with this. Mm -hmm. So uh, for people who have been on the commission for uh, 12 or more years, you're eligible to get an award. And um, in discussion, what, as we were discussing, we figured that if all of the people who are eligible to receive that reward would like to go, we can cover their costs and maybe one or two potentially other people. Well, so we would need to see who wants eligible. to go we first. Need to see who needs to, who you wants to go? No, Will we still Charlie have a Karen meeting? And, and who's eligible for? Sure. I don't know if, if, Does if matter. The, still got any more? I don't know if I could get the award. Nick? Yeah. Sure, the council would go for that. <laughs> well, she just said they'll pay for the people who are getting awards, yeah. and I'm willing to step aside to make sure that that happens. Yeah. We'll so to, we need we'll to make sure <coughs> Charlie Duran's invited, and he's aware of it. Mm -hmm. Charlie Ladd. Yep. Nick Lafakis. Yep. And I believe that was the three that are eligible. Who CBA? I believe Marianne Turner and uh, Charles Masterbirdie. They've been on that long? 12 years? Yep. So I have to, we'll need to just verify from the Connecticut Fed Federation that the those recipients can receive the award if they are no longer on the commission. So well, yeah, it has I'll just need to verify. I, I'm not positive. Too. Yeah. yeah. And I, did Charlie may have already gotten an award? I think he already has. He was on 25 years or something. Yeah, but this is... Okay. Well, so, anyways, yeah. you figure that stuff out. I really, and I think the commission's behind me on this, mm -hmm. make sure that the applications are sent in if they're eligible. Yeah. And they're there if they choose to go. Yeah. Okay. And the town at least picks the tab up on them. I'm not worried about myself or. Right, but we need to decide whether or not, well, first we'll figure out how many people want to go or are going, and then we'll figure out whether we even have a quorum to have a meeting because. Normally in the night. past, for all the years that I've been associated with the town, they cancel the planning and zoning meeting and count that as a meeting and everybody goes. That way you're not feeling that you have to stay here and miss the presentation, not the awards, the presentation, because there's a lot of good material. This is affordable housing. I, I understand. I can't go. I sold oh. my house, and I'm moving that day, and I, I, I will be at the meeting, but oh. I'm here, so. Are you still in town? Huh? Oh, yeah. so, you, so you're out I'm regardless. Out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, you don't want to live on that road anymore after you did that Chevy? Being a new member, I would be interested to go. It's, it's, it's a very lovely event. Okay. And yeah. uh, they, they have very good food. I mean, even if, you know, if I have to, <laughs> I can pay for, if I have to pay for myself to go. Uh, uh, I just don't think we should give any of our budget and money to ZBA. Let them get their own money. Uh, for their I members. understand that. Uh, yeah. ZBA. Right. ZBA has their money. They have ZBA. money too. Oh, so, I yeah. mean, all right. We, we, I don't want to take tradition. our money. We'll give Marianne or Lacks. that whole crew our money. We'll kidding. figure it out. You can afford your own. I did. I said I'll pay for my own. Yeah. I can afford it too. I just didn't want to. Oh, well, you don't have to. You're getting an award. That doesn't mean I don't have to pay. Yeah, it does. Oh. 
So are you saying that you would like to cancel the meeting or would you like to reschedule it to say the 25th if I could find a room? No, I'm saying that if we, need, we, if we have things that we need to talk about, and that's Ken's decision, we should have a meeting, but usually the meeting is not held on the night of the um, okay. aquaturf thing. That way people don't feel they have to stay so here. So you want to reschedule? The, the regular That's up meeting. To Ken. He's the, the chair, special but meeting. I'm just saying Again, what we've done. It depends on what the load is at that particular time. Right. Too. We're, right. Yeah. You know, right. I agree. You could have a meeting with no nobody at yeah. That's what scared that week. Right. You'll be at the meeting. Yeah. I'll be at the okay. meeting. Are you going to this front? I would like to go, being a new member. Of going right? I, I'll be at the meeting. Here. Yes. So I got three. So uh, we need to discuss with Mary Scott. I'm sure Linda would go. Yeah. No, Linda wants, always goes. And, right, and absolutely. Mary always goes. So, okay, and Mary goes, so I need to just check with there. John. And um, What's his face again? Drew? No. Dane. Dane. So you need to have a quorum here is what you're right, looking for. And I will have it because I have three right now. You need four. four you need four. four. Right. So I need to just so check. So who, who's the third? Are you? Well, she's I've not got Rich Suzak. Staff's not going to be here for the meeting either, though, because they're going to the. Yeah, aren't you guys going to the meeting? I mean, aren't you going to Aquaturf? I don't necessarily go. Oh. Hmm? I wasn't planning you, on going. You, you had mentioned we can do the meeting the night before. Could we, being it's a regular scheduled meeting and they're already posted for a whole year, could we switch? Yeah, it, 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 yeah, we would have to cancel the 26th we, and then not, set. Okay, I was just asking All I need is logistically if we can do that. And we're good to go. And we don't even know what the agenda is yet. Yeah. We've been working very smooth, getting things approved, yeah. moving along. Yeah. So right. as of right now, the meeting stays. Rich is okay. going to be here. I'm going to be here. Vinny will be here. Mm -hmm. So all the important guys are here. Yeah. Yeah. No, all the important guys are getting awards. <laughs> We're just totally stuck behind. Right. So, but you still need at least one more person to I, be right. up there. Um, and yeah. I, I mean, reach, I'll reach out to John, ask him. Okay. Um, I don't know about Dane. I don't know what the status is with him. So He hasn't even been to a meeting yet, so. Right. Pretty hard to say. But he still fills a quorum if he's here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and if he's not, then that's another reason to go to the town council and ask them to put somebody who's going to start showing up. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we're keeping the meeting on for the 26th for now. We have, we've, got, we've got almost a month to work it out. Yeah, that's just my opinion, so, guys. I'm just oh, one. It's oh, not, so okay. I have I three right now. I think we can get the fourth. I was going to say, And Jin, mm -hmm. you want to go? I want to go, and I have one myself. So it would be Ginny, Charlie, and then Charlie Duran, and Nick. <coughs> Nick Lefakis did confirm that he would be interested in going. It would be nice. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nick um, is going? Yes. Good. Good. So, and then we just need to pull the other members. Back. I'd be surprised if Dern goes, because he's been skipping those because of his wife's health and his health. Well, he could go and have his daughter. Right. Commissioner Alimo is the fourth for the meeting, so we have a quorum. I'm going to stay back. Oh, okay. Okay. But you were so That's because you don't want to miss a meal. <laughs> Well, <laughs> this this one I'll is affordable it housing. Meeting. It's going to be really yeah. interesting. Be the the alternatives to all affordable housing. I'll pass. I'll let you go and I'll stay here for the meeting. What? Yeah. They don't have primary. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I've been many. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so are you good with that? Yeah. Meetings on schedule. Yep, and we will investigate you for further for attendees. The chairman gets signed prime ribs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Updated commissioner contact list. Just You're with the top. updates you required. <laughs> okay. 
Yep. Is that what you wanted, Rich? Yes. Yeah. No, you you had said that you wanted to go yes, to yes, get yes, yeah. go in a specific yes. order, so that's good. so it made sense to do that. So that's good. Uh, commissioner's correspondence, Commissioner Alimo. Yeah, I had a question. I was going to bring. I was going to bring it up at our earlier discussion. Um, opportunity zones. I hear a lot about them in the news. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about them? How do you how do you achieve one? Can Thompsonville be an opportunity zone? Uh, don't just some background, please. Um, I don't know a lot about them, um, but basically they are areas of um, areas that need assistance because of low income and uh, distressed communities. Uh, the state decides who get who becomes an opportunity zone, which was decided already. However, there is discuss and we were not selected. Um, so Enfield is not an, an opportunity zone. There is some discussion that there may a lot more opportunity zones in the future. When or where, I'm not sure. Um, certainly, we will be um, with our hands up if, if it happens. So is we'll it a competitive process? Is it like getting a I, grant? I'm. It, it is it is getting funding. I don't know. But isn't um, it isn't it where private companies invest in in the zone, being opportunity zones? I like I said I I, I haven't really boned up on it because we weren't part of it and okay. I've had to learn a lot of other stuff. So I so have if it's going to come up again, we, we maybe it. we have to talk to our delegation, our local yeah. uh, representatives. I mean, we have the TIF, which is more of like an investment. Right. Yeah. You know, the TIF, but, yeah. I understand that, but it's, it so. seems like these opportunity zones are starting to work throughout the nation. Right, yeah. Um, like I say, I, I did hear that there's going to be some... So um, if there's an application process and it's competitive, if you apply maybe totally as the town of Enfield, we wouldn't look as strong because of our demographics, but if we applied for it using the Thompsonville area, it may put us higher up on that totem pole um, to be uh, accepted if we do a target area yeah. I, i'm not sure how the application process is yeah but and i'm not have, either our demographics may have threw us right out of the mix mm -hmm. but we got to find out if we can just use a part of the town yeah. and what you described seems like it would it would right. you know get us up higher if we use just the thompsonville area so you know I, on top of the tip yeah i i know that we actually were removed from the distressed community list but that, well, that that's might good. change with the <laughs> census. It's good and bad. It's good and bad, that, right, right. It, it's good because we're, we're not considered distressed, but it's bad because then we are not eligible for other <coughs> funding sources. So, again, I, I didn't really focus on learning about the opportunity zones because I learned that we were not part of it, and mm -hmm. it was, and up until recently, it was like not going to happen that they were going to change or add any right. of them. When you so. have some uh, spare time, could you just find out a little more about them, what they're about, and maybe we could be geared up and ready uh, to go absolutely and, i'll get you a summary yeah. thank but you it was actually an item at, of I'm, discussion at the southern new england um american planning association i went to one of the workshops on opportunity zones oh, you and did. i felt the same way that you did and when i talked to Lori, <laughs> she had the same answer but i think i still have the stuff from the conference so yeah okay. that might be helpful did, yeah, did, did, uh, was it by demographics <laughs> or was, it was a competitive process it it was just given the amount of communities that are in Connecticut looking for any type of funding. Um, and from what I understood, it didn't necessarily mean you were going to get investments from private developers, but it sort of incentivized private developers a little more to come to your community, right, which is right. why they've been yeah. so successful. We have a natural resource, the river, who we all want to address. So, you know, being an opportunity zone may help us. Uh, complete some development along the river and in the, in the area here. So, yeah, any more information we can get on that or if it's going to be some application process coming up, let's stay on yeah. top of it. Yeah, I, I've actually already, you know, had that conversation with a couple of people that we need to be, you know, right. keep an eye on this one. Yeah, right. And if we so. need to reach out to our state legislators and uh, yeah. senators, we mm -hmm. can uh, ask them to yep. uh, keep us apprised of what's going on with that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There's two lists that I should have. I, I, I would just like to point out that we did, we did, did get this flyer on the Northern Connecticut Agricultural Summit. Yep. 
so I, that it, it, it is going to occur on Saturday, March 29th, 2020. And I was just reading some of the topics that might be, I, I guess, of interest to some of the, the viewers that we have there. Out, it, it, it's growing hemp in Connecticut is one, beekeeping basics, pollinating, um, meat regulations, racing, backyard poultry, hydroponics, farm access, farm insurance, climate change, farming resiliency. I, I think there's going to be a lot of good subjects that could interest a lot of different people. And mm -hmm. it is going to start at about, I, I think, 8.30. The doors open at 8.15. And the keynote speaker is Joan Nichols from the Agricultural uh, Director, Executive Director of the Connecticut Farm Bureau Association. So, but just, just to put that out so that if people wanted to put it on their calendar for the end of the month, they could start mm -hmm. thinking about it. Yeah, just to add to that, um, if, if uh, somebody wants to find that, that uh, sign-up sheet, it is, list, it is on the web, uh, the web page for the Agricultural Commission on our Enfield site. Um, we're also going to be putting it back out on Facebook and, and some of the other, um, what is it, Twitter. Um, and we're probably going to put it on the front page, on our front web page. We just didn't want to put it on too early because it, it, as things get added, it gets lowered down on the page. So, um, we, And there's been a press release out on it. And it's free to anybody that wants to come. So please come to that. Uh, this is our second annual. Last year, we had about 75 people show up. And that was with the snow date. Um, it was very well received, and uh, we're hoping to have this uh, to be more successful and to continue it. <coughs> so. Well, we're having an agricultural summit. <laughs> so. Um, Yes. Uh, no, I do have a couple things. So um, we are working on community, expanding the community gardens. We're seeking a, a, a crowdfunding grant from C Sustainable CT. So we're actually working on uh, trying to put some beds over by the main library and then also on church and chapel the, right behind or just north of La Mania Center. So um, we're hoping to have those beds up, at least 25 or 30 of the beds up and running for June. So Main library or Pearl Street library? The main, over at. OK. What, oh. Middle road. Behind the playground? Middle, middle road, yes. Middle road. Yeah, you're yeah. pointing here. I'm like, that's to the old one. So all right. Um, the old one's over there. <laughs> up. OK. Yes, OK. <laughs> Am I right? Um, yes. Thank you. The farm, we are working on changing the farmer's market from Wednesdays to Sundays. So um, that's, that's a, a new thing that's coming up. What time is that? Uh, I think we're having it. Uh, it hasn't actually been decided yet, so I don't want to say. What time is it currently on Wednesdays? Oh, uh, Wednesdays right after work. Uh, it's 4.30 to 6. Yeah. So, Sunday. Sunday is definitely yeah. better. Absolutely. Um, so it's it's new. So it's all in the works. Yep. Um, we might be working on a census count committee. We're trying to figure out how best to operate something of that nature. I mean, it's 2020 census, um, and the committee is supposed to be formed to try to make sure that censuses are actually being taken and focus on the areas that really need to be focused on. I mean, you know, Thompsonville and some of our higher density, lower income areas really need to be, you know, make sure they're canvassed properly. Uh, actually, uh, the Kasha. Priscilla was uh, following through with that. And um, we have been approached by somebody that's also working with the um, Enfield Arts Can Council to try to bring art into Thompsonville, uh, especially into blighted buildings, where if there's some sort of um, Boarding. boards or something, and then we, they would create the same size board someplace and then replace the board with the nice art. So. The one thing that we have Not to, break in, 
We've had uh, that before. Not we? graffiti art, okay? But graffiti can be art. So, but the big thing that we were concerned about was that it would not be a sign. So, um, we we're working on working with this nice lady, and um, she's already forwarded us information from Hartford, who already has mm -hmm. um, a big program for well, the Save the so. Strand already has that on it, right. don't it? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's still there, but they tried that, I don't know if it was 15 years no, ago. No, it's not graffiti. It's yeah. somebody painted yeah. boards. The yep. No, no it was nice. Know. It was actually, yeah, no. It was one of the painters. Right. See, it was not graffiti. No, it was it nice. Was done. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I say, so we're working to see what sort of a program we could get up and running here and work with the beautification, or the, not beautification, but the Arts Council. So those are just some things that I've been working on. Okay. So, All set? Under. Yes. So, okay. I have a question. Ken, I, Mr. Chairman. Under uh, applications to be approved, I mean, to be received, you said none, right? Oh, you're there? Oh. Uh, yeah. No, she just finished her town oh, report. Okay. Authorization for administrative approval. We moved. Applications to be received. Well, I have one other item potentially for administrative approvals that we, it was sort of a, I wanted to run it by you. Um, the King's, King's Liquors on, on King Street, uh, they exist already in um, their unit and there's two units in the building that they're located in and they want to expand from the unit they're in, stay there, but just move their business beyond and take the, the wall down and make it a larger unit. Um, <coughs> and we were gonna, we we're thinking of handling it as a zoning permit, um, considering their use is already approved in that building. Um, unless you wanna handle it as a site plan or admin approval, we just wanted to run it by you. What building? It's, uh, it's 1541 King Street. A lot of times what happens is you know, a building permit will be put in and then it comes to usually to me for a, uh, an approval. So in this case, they're demising a wall. He's expanding the business, but the business was previously approved as a liquor store on one side, and uh, it was separate. It's King Street down here. So uh, rather than just approving it through uh, just the uh, building permit, we were thinking of issuing uh, a zoning permit to handle it so we'd have a record of it and have an approval of some sorts, but still uh, have a record in planning rather than just the building department. Is he going to be a liquor store? Was? Yeah, it's presently King's Liquor right yeah. now, yeah. next to, next to the hotel down there. The other side where the restaurant was? The other side, there, yeah, there was a restaurant. He, he wants to demise the wall in between and expand. By the old Bernies? No, the yeah. old uh, yeah. Yeah, the Carmen's restaurant and Dunzel. Uh, it's an easy means of, of, ex, of uh, expediting it and streamlining it. It really doesn't impact uh, yeah. anything down there other than that. Uh, yeah, I know. See, ever, uh, oh, yeah. Are they ever going to fix that the parking the lot? Did they the fix restaurant. it already with the big potholes? Did they fix part it? Of it part of it was fixed. Uh, I'm going to see what happens in the springtime. But we, we do have a, a section in the uh, yeah. for site maintenance. So yep. if things like that arise, I usually go to, to that. To Well, when you're approving it and signing off on it, you might want to mention it. Just, you know, to let them know springtime's coming in. We can do that. Yeah. First thing that comes to mind is every time you go by there, there used to be the in-ground pool, mm -hmm. and it's just all overgrown. It's not attractive. It's where you come into Enfield. I mean, is this where we use? Yeah. No, there used to be a motel. Yeah. There was an in-ground pool right to the right side of it. Correct. The motel's on the left. This was like this was like the check-in mm -hmm. place for the motel, and the pool was to the right. It used to be, but it was all overgrown. I don't know if they really cleaned it up much. Before I do an approval, I'm going to check it. So I'll, I'll make sure that there aren't any uh, zoning issues prior to any approval. But we were just lo looking at try to streamlining it as long as there aren't any uh, deviations from what you would normally approve in a situation like that. Right. I'm just looking at some sort of like landscaping too. I mean, that is the entrance in the Enfield. 
well, you know, you can you can review it. I mean, if it looks to to be something that's going to be a little more involved, then then I'll leave it up to you. All but right. I, okay. All right. I'm good with it. Yep. Sounds good. Go you want to vote, or you're good? If you're good with a zoning permit, we'll handle it as a zoning permit. But if. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I had one quick other thing. You had requested uh, the outcome of the 34 Burnham Johnston case with the Commission on Housing and, and uh, Human, I'm sorry, Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities. So um, first of all, the PCC was not actually the um, primary party. It was actually against the town of Enfield. Uh, the co complaint was resolved by a confidential settlement with no admission of liability. But we did have, to, part of the settlement was that we had to agree to have um, up to two, uh, two hour minimum fair housing training for staff and hopefully commissions if they decide to attend um, with emphasis on reasonable <coughs> accommodations. So that's what I can relay to you. So, but it's, it's done, it's final. All right, um, Taylor Road's done, text amendments done, to change the export laws. Why is that under applications to be received? XCA 20-01, text amendment, application to amend. That was just letting you know that, um, that, it, that, that text amendment has to come before you for public hearing, so okay. that'll be coming up next. Oh, that'll even, be coming yeah. up. Even though it's a, a, sort of a petition by the Planning and Zoning Commission to change the regulations, it still has to be, um, like, follow the same text amendment process as yep. someone from the public. Okay. When do you expect that back? Um, this one for accessory um, building heights, the uh, CROG gets 35 days to review, and that 35 days is coming up, I think, next week. So that means your next meeting you would be able to uh, hold a public hearing. Is that for the whole town, like we discussed before, so there's no lake overview that you have to come back for? It covers the whole town, right? What right. Well, we, we sent in the residential, commercial, and industrial districts um, to, to CROG. I don't yeah. think it would be a big deal to amend. Good. That okay. one part yes. for lakefront overlay. Yeah. It's that not. way we do everything once. Yeah. That'd be great. And it's coming. That's good. And is the um, administrative approval already at CROG? Yes. That, so all the other ones that we discussed, the administrative approval, the removing Thompsonville Village Center, and site restoration bonds, those are all at CROG. And those 35-day periods should be up in time to have them on for the first meeting in March. I believe it's the 12th. Right. That's what I was getting at. Can we make them all in one public meeting, public hearing? Or if you wanted to bump the uh, uh, the accessory building heights to the first meeting in March, we could. Well, that's one advertisement in the newspaper versus five. Right? Trying to save money in mm -hmm. your budget and advertising. Okay. I mean, if it makes sense to you guys. Yeah. You guys agree? Yeah. All Go right. For it. So we'll put them all on for the 12. Right. It saves Rich having to read them all. I'm doing it for Rich. <laughs> all right. So we're good with that. Okay. All right. Yep. Um, opportunities, unresolved issues. I still have something under applications to be received. I get or the result. Um, have you heard anything uh, from the mall owners? I know they were all. Hot and heavy to get going. Nothing official. I mean, even even a phone call to ask for some direction or you missed all that opinion. That there... was in the beginning of the meeting. What's we that? discussed before you were. Well, well, before the meeting was called to order. Yeah. Oh, so I'll the answer is that. okay. So um, the subdivision was filed. Mm -hmm. um, we do believe that there was not a closing as they suspected, but it did, it's, it's basically it being held in escrow. Um, they're still waiting on something. I don't know what it is. Um, I do believe that they, they also called us and said they had another interest, which I can't disclose, uh, but a, a new entity very interested in moving into the mall. 
So, um, but into the mall portion, not not it, one of the lots. Into the mall site, mall shall site. I say? Okay. And I know that there's been. In, um, didn't we have a DPN? Or I, I think Raquel told me that, yeah, she said that um, somebody had called to get a determination of permit need for, from wetlands for an outbuilding at the, someplace on the mall site, not necessarily next to the main building. So it would be like an outsite. Okay, I just wanted to keep updated on it because so. they were so in a hurry because they had this deal to close. And now it hasn't closed yet. So, well, funny. that happens in real estate. Oh, I know, but right, you Ken? know, I know it does. But Not my deals. They, they were, you know, <laughs> we, <laughs> we just to stay on top of it. Yeah. Thank you. Trust me, we are trying to stay on top of it as much as we can. Thank you very much. I move to adjourn. Second.